Messages from the Senate. <clears throat> Message from the Senate, Madam Speaker, I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following House file herewith returned as amended by the Senate, which amendments the concurrence of the House is respectfully requested. House file number 3356, an act relating to state government. Salk moves that the House concur in the Senate amendments to House file number 3356 and that the bill be repassed as amended by the Senate. Representative Salk, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh change that was added at the Senate is a very minor one. It enumerates an additional um, process for reporting of the activity in the Capitol. Um, the, all the parties are willing to accept it, and so it does not add a significant change. Discussion to the Salk motion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. please say no. The motion prevails. The clerk will give the bill its third reading as amended by the Senate. House file number 3356, third reading as amended by the Senate. Third reading as amended by the Senate. Discussion. Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on House file 3356 as amended by the Senate. Is that it there? <clears throat> Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Backer. Backer, aye. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, Baker, excused, Becker Finn, Becker Finn, aye, Bennett, Bennett, aye, Bennett, aye, Bernardi, Bernardi, Bierman, Bierman, aye, Bierman, aye, Bull. Bo, I. Bo, I. Brand. Brand. Cantrell. Cantrell, I. Cantrell, I. Carlson, A. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, L. Carlson, L. I. Carlson, L. I. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Pass. Daniels, pass. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Davids. Davids. Davney. Aye. Davney, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Dreskowski. Dreskowski, aye. Dreskowski, aye. Eklund. Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Edelson. Edelson, I. Edelson, I. Elkins. Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Erickson. Erickson, I. Erickson, I. Fabian. Fabian, I. Fabian, I. Fisher. Fisher, I. Fisher, I. Franson. Franson. Franson, I. Franson, I. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo. Gomez. Gomez. Green. Green, aye. Grassel. 
Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Gunther. Gunther, aye. Gunther, aye. Haley. Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hansen. Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Hassan. Hassan, I. Hassan, I. Hausman. Hausman, I. Hausman, I. Heinrich. Heinrich, I. Heinrich, I. Heinzman. Heinzman, I. Heinzman, I. Her. Her, I. Her, I. Hertos. Hertos, I. Hertos, I. Hornstein. Hornstein, I. Hornstein, I. Howard. Howard I. Howard I. Hewitt. Hewitt I. Hewitt I. Johnson. Johnson I. Jordan. Jordan I. Jordan I. Jurgens. Jurgens I. Jurgens I. Keel. Keel I. Keel I. Cleavorn. Cleavorn I. Cleavorn I. Cagle. Cagle I. Cagle I. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, I. Katiza Watoon, I. Kosnick. Kosnick, I. Kosnick, I. Krisha. Krisha, I. Krisha, I. Kunish Podine. Kunish Podine, I. Kunish Podine, I. Layman. Layman, I. Layman, I. Lee. Lee, I. Lee, I. Lash. Lash, I. Lash, I. Liebling. Liebling, I. Liebling, I. Lean. Lean, I. Lean, I. Lily. Lily, I. Lippert. Lippert, I. Lippert, I. Lislegard. Lislegard, I. Lislegard, I. Long. Long, I. Long, I. Lucero. Lucero, yes. Lucero, I. Lewick. Lewick, I. Lewick, I. Mahoney. Mahoney, I. Mahoney, I. Man. Man, I. Man, I. Mariani. Mariani. Markwart. Markwart, I. Markwart, I. Mason. Mason, I. Mason, I. McDonald. McDonald, I. McDonald, I. Mecklen. Mecklen, I. Mecklen, I. Miller. Miller, I. Miller, I. Moeller. Moeller, I. Moeller, I. Moran. Moran. Morrison. Morrison, I. Morrison, I. Munson. Munson, I. Munson, I. Murphy. Murphy, I. Murphy, I. Nash. Nash, I. Nash, I. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. I. Nelson N. I. New. New I. Nor. Nor I. Nor I. Nornus. Nornus I. Nornus I. Novotny. Novotny I. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll I. Olson. Olson I. Olson I. O'Neill. O'Neill, I. O'Neill, I. Palowski. Palowski, I. Palowski, I. Purcell. Purcell, I. Purcell, I. Petersburg. Petersburg, I. Petersburg, I. Pearson. Pearson, I. Pearson, I. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Poston. Poston, I. Poston, I. Pryor. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Quam. Quam, I. Quam, I. Richardson. Richardson, I. Richardson, I. Robbins. Robbins, I. Runbeck. Runbeck, I. Sandell. Sandell, I. Sandell, I. Sandstead. Sandstead, I. Sandstead, I. Salk. Salk, I. Salk, I. Schumacher. Schumacher, I. Schumacher, I. Schultz. Schultz, I. Schultz, I. Scott. 
Scott, I. Scott. Scott, I. Scott, I. Stevenson. Stevenson, I. Stevenson, I. Sundin. Sundin, I. Sundin, I. Swazinski. Swazinski, I. Tabkey. Tabke I. Tice. Tice I. Tice I. Torkelson. Torkelson I. Erdahl. Erdahl I. Erdahl I. Vang. Vang I. Vang I. Vogel. Vogel I. Vogel I. Wagenius. Wagenius I. Wagenius I. Waslowick. Waslowick I. Waslowick I. West. West I. West I. Winkler. Winkler I. Wagamot. Walgamot, aye. Walgamot, aye. Zhang J. Zhang J. Zhang T. Zhang T, aye. Zhang T, aye. Joachim. Joachim, aye. Joachim, aye. Speaker Hartman. Aye. Speaker Hartman, aye. Bar. Bar. Bernardi. I. I. Bernardi. Bernardi. I. Bernardi. I. Brand. I. Brand. Brand. Uh, Br I. Daniels. 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 I. Daniels. I. Davids. David's I. David's I. Garofalo. Garofalo, yes. Garofalo, I. Gomez. Yes. Gomez. Mariani. Mariani. Moran. Moran, I. Moran, I. Zhang J. Zhang J. There being 129 ayes and zero nays, the bill is repassed as amended by the Senate and its title agreed to. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Winkler from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Sunday, May 17, 2020, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. Senate file numbers 3800, 3808, 3683, 3258, 3322, 3204, and 3745, and House files number 125 and 163. Calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 4206. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 4206, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to workers' compensation. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 4206. Third reading. I recognize the member from Carleton, Representative Sundin, to the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. 4206 adopts the recommendations made by the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council related to a number of things. One, the implement, implementation of the Workers' Compensation Modernization Program known as Work Comp Campus. Another is the Department of Commerce proposals 
related to self-insurers, occupational disease presumptions, payments to the estate of a deceased employee, application of the pharmacy fee schedule to second in injury claims reimbursed by the special compensation fund and vocational uh, rehabilitation and insurance verification data. Uh, 46 or 4206 reflects the bipartisan agreement to recommend passage of the Workman's Comp Advisory Council recommendations. These recommendations are the sum of deliberations between labor entities and business leaders. There are 21 sections to the bill that are technical in nature and have been scrutinized and approved by labor and business. I'd like to thank Representative Albright for his participation as a council member and uh, I ask for your support. The member from Scott, Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Sundin, for bringing House File 4206 forward. Members, this uh, uh, bill represents the hard work of a number of people, both on the management and labor side, and uh, it is uh, strongly bipartisan. It is non-controversial, uh, and I would urge a green vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Any further discussion to the bill? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on House File 4206. Acom. Acom, I. Acom, I. Albright. Albright, I. Anderson. Anderson, I. Anderson, I. Backer. Backer, I. Backer, I. Bonner. Bonner, I. Bonner, I. Barr. Barr. Baker. Excuse. Becker Finn. Becker Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell. Cantrell, I. Cantrell, I. Carlson, A. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, L. Carlson, L. I. Carlson, L. I. Christensen. Christensen, I. Christensen, I. Claflin. Claflin, I. Claflin, I. Considine. Considine, I. Considine, I. Daniels. Daniels, I. Daniels, I. Doubt. Doubt, I. Davids. Davids, I. Davids, I. Daphne. Daphne votes, I. Daphne, I. Dean. Dean, I. Dean, I. Damoth. Damoth, I. Damoth, I. Detmer. Detmer, I. Draskowski. Draskowski, I. Draskowski, I. Eklund. Eklund, I. Eklund, I. Edelson. Edelson, I. Edelson, I. Elkins. Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Erickson. Erickson, I. Erickson, I. Fabian. Fabian, I. Fabian, I. Fisher. Fisher, I. Fisher, I. Franzen. Franzen, I. Franzen, I. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, I. Garofalo. Garofalo, yes. Garofalo, I. Gomez. <laughs> Gomez, I. Gomez, I. Green. Green, I. Grossel. Grossel, I. Grossel, I. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, I. Grunhagen, I. Oh. Gunther. Gunther. Gunther, I. Gunther, I. Haley. Haley, I. Haley, I. Halverson. Halverson, I. Halverson, I. Hamilton. Hamilton, I. Hamilton, I. Hanson. Hanson, I. Hanson, I. Hassan. Hassan, I. Hassan, I. Hausman. Hausman, I. Hausman, I. Heinrich. Heinrich, I. Heinrich, I. Heinzman. 
Heinzman, I. Heinzman, I. Her. Her, I. Her, I. Hertos. Hertos, I. Hertos, I. Hornstein. Hornstein, I. Hornstein, I. Howard. Howard. Hewitt. Howard, I. Howard, I. Hewitt. Hewitt, I. Hewitt, I. Johnson. Johnson, I. Jordan. Jordan, I. Jordan, I. Jurgens. Jurgens, I. Jurgens, I. Keel. Keel, I. Keel, I. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, I. Cleavorn, I. Cagle. Cagle, I. Cagle, I. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, aye. Katiza Watoon, aye. Kosnick. Kosnick, aye. Kosnick, aye. Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, aye. Kunish Podin, aye. Layman. Layman, aye. Layman, aye. Lee. Lee, aye. Lee, aye. Lesh. Lesh, aye. Lesh, aye. Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, I. Lean, I. Lily. Lily, I. Lippert. Lippert, I. Lippert, I. Lislagard. Lislagard, I. Lislagard, I. Long. Long, I. Long, I. Lucero. Lucero, yes. Lucero, I. Lewick. Lewick, I. Lewick, I. Mahoney. Mahoney, I. Mahoney, I. Man. Man, I. Man, I. Mariani. Mariani. Marquardt. Marquardt, I. Marquardt, I. Mason. Mason, I. Mason, I. McDonald. McDonald, I. McDonald, I. Mecklen. Mecklen, I. Mecklen, I. Miller. Miller, I. Miller, I. Moeller. Moeller, I. Moeller, I. Moran. Moran, I. Moran, I. Morrison. Morrison, I. Morrison, I. Munson. Munson, I. Munson, I. Murphy. Murphy, I. Murphy, I. Nash. Nash, I. Nash, I. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. I. Nelson N. I. New. New I, nor. Nor I. Nor I, Nornus. Nornus I. Nornus I, Novotny. Novotny I, O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll I, Olson. Olson I. Olson I, O'Neill. O'Neill I. O'Neill I, Palowski. Palowski I. Palowski I, Purcell. Purcell, I. Purcell, I. Petersburg. Petersburg, I. Petersburg, I. Pearson. Pearson, I. Pearson, I. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Poston. Poston, I. Poston, I. Pryor. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Quam. 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 Quam I. Quam I. Richardson. Richardson I. Richardson I. Robbins. Robbins I. Runbeck. Runbeck I. Sandell. Sandell I. Sandell I. Sandstead. Sandstead I. Sandstead I. Salk. Salk I. Salk I. Schumacher. Schumacher I. Schumacher I. Schultz. Schultz, I. Schultz, I. Scott. Scott, I. Scott, I. Stevenson. Stevenson, I. Stevenson, I. Sundin. Sundin, I. Sundin, I. Swazinski. Swazinski, I. Tabke. Tabke, I. Tice. Tice, I. Tice, I. Torkelson. Torkelson, I. Erdahl. Erdahl, I. Erdahl, I. Vang. 
Vang I. Vang I. Vogel. Vogel I. Vogel I. Wagenius. Wagenius I. Wagenius I. Waslowick. Waslowick I. Waslowick I. West. West I. West I. Winkler. Winkler I. Walgamot. Walgamot I. Wal Walgamot I. Zhang J. Zhang J I. Zhang J I. Zhang T. Zhang T. Joachim. Joachim I. Joachim I. Speaker Hartman. Aye. Speaker Hartman I. <clears throat> Bar. Bar. Mariani. Mariani. Mariani I. Mariani I. Zhang T. Zhang T. Zhang T. There being 131 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 2682. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 2682, number four on the calendar for the day, an act relating to legacy, the second engrossment. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House Bill number 2682. Third reading, discussion. I recognize the member from Ramsey, the author of the bill, Representative Lilly. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, thank you for hearing the legacy bill today. It's important for the people of Minnesota, uh, the good work that we're able to do with these uh, legacy, legacy funds. Uh, this bill will uh, keep people working on habitat projects all over Minnesota, from one end to the other, all from side to side. It also provides important extensions for funds uh, canceling at the end of uh, June here in a few days, and, uh, and some ending next June. Uh, COVID-19 uh, has been devastating, especially for our arts uh, and cultural uh, community and organizations, and this bill allows us, allows for them to uh, make uh, use of the funds and uh, hopefully keep them alive uh, through the crisis. Um, this bill uh, helps Minnesotans uh, all across Minnesota. So the, going into the bill itself, uh, uh, the first article is uh, the outdoor heritage uh, part of the bill. And that comes from uh, the Outdoor uh, Heritage uh, Committee, uh, which uh, two of our members are uh, active on, on that committee, uh, Representative Fabian and Representative uh, uh, Beckard Finn. And uh, uh, hopefully later, uh, either one of them or both will uh, speak to some of that. Uh, um, it came out of, uh, the bill essentially came out of the committee, 12-0. Uh, with a solid vote. Uh, they put a lot, a lot of work into this. They work, meet all summer. Uh, the, st the staff does an amazing job, I feel. Uh, I kind of follow it. I used to be a member, and uh, I just, uh, I'm really proud of the work that they do. There's uh, citizens especially seem to put a lot of uh, time and effort. Um, you've got uh, even f a couple famous people that sh shocked me, like Ron uh, Scher is on there. and. Um, Anyways, uh, it's just kind of fun to see, but they look at these projects and study it hard and, and put a lot of thought in it and make sure that, uh, that they're uh, fair and good across the state of Minnesota. Um, so MMB uh, numbers came in. It's no secret to any of us. Uh, about a week ago, they came in, and so we reached out to them and said, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to... Uh, do you want to leave it to MMB or do you want us to tweak on some things? 
uh, or do you want to take a look at it yourself? And so they were open to uh, adjustments, and so this, this bill reflects the adjustments. So it's down about 15% or about $20 million of their, uh, their asks, and it's across a board proportionately to, to each of the projects. And uh, they also had some turnbacks uh, projects and some other things, and they'd left uh, wisely some left some money on the bottom line. So, and that's kind of in that that section is. Uh, and um, if you have questions, I'll stand for that later. Or we have some uh, the author and deeper experts behind me here that have served and picked out those projects. So going on to the the arts and uh, cultural. Uh, part of the bill, um, it, uh, you know, we had a couple projects that are in there, uh, Representative Detmer and uh, had a bill and so did I, we were working on, uh, but and I think he's going to speak in a few minutes on this, but uh, there's a memorial out on the mall and uh, we're able to incorporate, incorporate that and so that's, that's going to move along uh, for the betterment of Minnesota. Uh, this article in Article 2 has language that extends the appropriation in all the funds, so parks and trails, arts and culture, outdoor heritage, and uh, I don't know which one I didn't mention, <laughs> parks and trails. Um, so anyways, uh, all four of the funds will be extended one year, and then uh, in the arts and cultural, uh, some of the projects are going to see a two-year uh, extension. and. Uh, so that allows uh, um, them, given the COVID situation, uh, opportunities to do these uh, projects um, beyond the deadline here and, uh, and to continue the good work. There's also a provision in here that uh, uh, Represent Nelson uh, worked on. It's, uh, um, and uh, Senator Kiffmeyer, I believe, it's uh, Arts Board allowing them a year to, uh, to move um, in, you know, stretching out the, the relocation deadline. And then the big thing, the, I think uh, we have some language in the House bill and in the Senate, it was agreed upon with uh, Senator Rood and their team and our team, and uh, um, it's to, uh, uh, it'll help maintain uh, some of the financial stability in these organizations. They've been hit so hard in the arts and cultural area, so it allows them a little more flexibility in how to spend the funds. And this is going to help, uh, you know, libraries all over the state. We've kind of heard what's going on at the Minnesota Zoo, and this is true with all the zoos that get some of this funding. Libraries, um, I, I can't see your doll here, but maybe the Litchfield Opera House or um, Bobby Gunther's uh, museum down there, the G Green Giant. But, you know, these things all over the state, the uh, county fairs, helps them to give them a little flexibility in spending the money. Um, Minnesotans, uh, you know, really value these funds and uh, you know they uh, they've been able to do a lot of good work all over the the state and uh, you can see it right now uh, how, just how popular uh, the parks and trails are and actually in the metro we've had a problem where the they're actually too full and uh, so the maintenance and different things and the parks are just super popular and a lot of these funds go to that and the same with uh, fishing license and so the outdoor heritage part is um, um, obviously very popular and so it's exciting for the future of Minnesota that we're uh, that we have this opportunity but also that uh, these monies go to great investments uh, throughout Minnesota I'm pretty proud of the when you look into these bills uh, how our partners, like Trouts Unlimited, um, some of the conservation groups, uh, how their prairie restorations and the different projects, if you look at it, please look at it. They're, these things are all over the state and uh, um, just really good work being done. The arts organizations are sending, you know, spending money. They're, you know, they're, the money goes to the big organizations, uh, certainly, uh, you know, like an Ordway. But there's also maybe a, a potter up in Representative Fadian's district that'll get funds and uh, can do good work. But um, with that, uh, I'll, I'll stand for stand for questions or yield to uh, other members that have some comments. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chair and members, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Lilly. Um, I see Representative Erdahl would like to be recognized. Thank you. 
Representative Erdahl. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. And I'd like to uh, thank Representative Lilly uh, for his work on, on this. Uh, legacy is uh, not always easy to put together and to pass. As a past chair and member of his committee, I have uh, found uh, by firsthand experience. Uh, but we have an obligation to distribute this money as intended by the people of Minnesota and as directed by the Constitution. Uh, would Representative y Lilly uh, yield for a question? He will yield. Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, Representative Lilly. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, were there any changes made uh, to the uh, recommendations from the Outdoor Heritage Council? Representative Lilly. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Representative Erdahl. Uh, first off, I want to, uh, it was a, I want to thank my committee. Uh, they, I had a good committee. Uh, I had uh, three former chairs on there, so they make you a little nervous. I have uh, uh, Chair Murphy on there and former Chair Erdahl, and, um, and uh, it makes you a little nervous. Bobby Gunther, I reached out quite a bit for advice and uh, that sort of thing. But to the question is there was uh, basically uh, uh, no changes. We respected their, uh, uh, through the conversations that we had, we respected the proportional cuts based on their last meeting. And that was kind of an executive board uh, decision. Um, we also, uh, I failed to mention that, uh, I guess there was one addition. We, uh, we have in, the, in this bill that uh, the meetings will be uh, uh, broadcast where they can be uh, made public where possible. And uh, the upside of that is they've got a really a good story to tell. I mean, they really take it serious on looking at these projects. So um, we thought it'd be great if uh, Minnesotans could take a look and see what's going on. And I think, it, uh, I think they'll be proud of the work that the Outdoor Heritage Council is doing. Thank you, Representative Erdahl. Representative Erdahl. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you, uh, Representative Lilly, for your answer. I think uh, it's uh, very important to stay uh, quite true to the Outdoor uh, Heritage Council's recommendations. Uh, in, in the past, uh, trying to, uh, to vary from that has been problematic, so I'm glad that you are, are sticking with it, and I urge uh, support of this bill. Thank you. The member from Washington, Representative Detmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. And uh, again, thank you, Representative Lilly, for uh, bringing this uh, through your bill. I know this has been a five-year project, members, and uh, I think the people of Minnesota can be very proud of what uh, we've been able to do over five years. You know, this project is really uh, a $750,000 project, uh, a memorial that's gonna be built on the campus here at the Capitol, uh, just uh, south of the World War II Memorial. And uh, again, uh, back in 2016, a uh, citizen came into my office and said that we need to have a memorial for the Minnesota uh, veterans who have served in various wars and have received a recipient of the Medal of Honor, which is the highest honor you can get uh, in our serving our country. And so in 2017, this is when the, uh, we brought forward, the legislature brought forward $200, $250,000. And uh, there was a committee formed, and we designed the memorial. A lot of people were involved with this. I know uh, Commissioner Larry Shelato at that time was very involved as myself, and uh, different senators and representatives. Uh, Representative Lilly was part of that, Representative Gunderson, and uh, also Representative uh, Murphy. And I think uh, in 2016, we actually were, the, Minnesota was the host to the 2016 Medal of Honor uh, National Convention. And I was uh, uh, honored to be able to meet 45 different uh, Medal of Honor recipients from around the country. And the last Minnesota Medal of Honor recipient, uh, Leo Thorsness, a Vietnam War veteran, was laid to rest back in uh, 2018, February 14, 2018, and uh, at the Arlington National Cemetery. And he was a pilot during the, the Vietnam War, was shot down, and spent six years in the uh, Hotel Hilton 
in Hanoi, and uh, uh, he has a, quite a story. In fact, there's a, a movie you can actually uh, just Google his name, Leo Thorntness, and you can see uh, his story. He also has a book out. But again, this is the highest honor that a person who is serving our country can receive for their service. And it's the highest award of value against an enemy force. Uh, along with not only building the memorial, which will start sometime this fall, um, the, uh, the $750,000 that's going to cost to uh, build this memorial, um, the majority of that was, was uh, through private funding from around the state. Different uh, corporations, different people, different individuals were able to uh, put money together to build this. We've already, in fact, we've already had the uh, groundbreaking ceremony. And uh, there's an education piece to this also. If you go to the website, minnesotamedalofhonormemorial.org, you can see everything that has been put together for this project. There's an education part of this where that memorial is going to be an education piece for our students from our different schools. And there's also a curriculum. And that curriculum is entitled the Medal of Honor Character Development Program because character does count. It's a, it's a program to teach students, our elementary students, and now they're developing a, a high school program. And they train teachers how to develop and how to uh, provide this curriculum to their students. So it's a, it's a real honor to um, be part of this project. I'm looking forward, we've already had the brown breaking ceremony over a year ago, and looking forward to the completion of the project. And again, uh, Representative Lilly, thank you again for putting this, uh, in fact, the money was already allocated in 2017. It went to the Department of Administration and then for some reason, uh, it didn't engage, and it was sent back to the legacy uh, committee, and we brought it back. So it's not really new money. It's money that's already been uh, allocated back in 2016. So thank you so much, Madam Speaker and Representative Lilly. Um, Representative Heinzman wishes to be recognized. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Chair Lilly, uh, if you would yield for a question. He will yield, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, uh, Chair Lilly, you said there's been a reduction in uh, the uh, uh, funding. And I'm wondering, uh, across the board, uh, what is a percentage or the percentage of reduction and I'm assuming that has to do with a reduced expectation in the amount of revenues coming in. My second question would be, uh, if it isn't enough of a reduction, how does the legacy um, uh, funding mechanisms work if it doesn't cover the appropriation? Representative Lilly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. and. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Lead Heitzman. Uh, um, just a defining question: Was it uh, j simply related to the uh, outdoor heritage funds, or to to the various funds? Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Chair Lilly. I'm I'm referring to the the appropriations we're discussing today. Representative Lilly. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and uh, um, Lead Heitzman. Uh, so, as I, uh, I mentioned in, in my opening comments, uh, so the outdoor heritage uh, uh, portion of the bill, we were able to uh, to work with them, and uh, um, they had they had some money on the bottom line, and they uh, um, they also. Um, had some projects that uh, were not completed, so turnbacks, if or what a you know exact term, but that's what I would call it. Um, but they, so after the MMB numbers, they came back and uh, they agreed to do about a, I think it was about a 15% uh, cut, 
which is about $20 million across the board. So honestly, if uh, um, that was not enough and uh, you know, the cuts end up being deeper, then at that point, MMB would uh, come in and uh, do cuts. Uh, um, and I, I would hope that they would respect uh, the council's uh, uh, efforts there. Um, in the other funds, they've reached out to the parks and trails, uh, say like the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails, and they've agreed to uh, uh, to, a, um, to hold back on some of the the second year's funding. I think is what I thought I heard, and then uh, um, the see uh, the arts and cultural. They're going to cut across the board in the different funds proportionate as well as best they can. And that'd be the MMB doing those. Uh, we tried to reach out to them, and uh, uh, it was a little complicated because each different organization, so it's uh, uh, museums, and it's just so many different moving pieces. So um, that's going to take some effort. In the clean water portion of the bill, we, uh, um, we tried to uh, reach out to them. We had a wonderful meet, a Zoom meeting with their leadership, um, and... Uh, um, Mr. Jewell from up in uh, Duluth area and uh, Mr. Gardner and we kind of thought we could do the same thing we did with Lassard Sams but uh, um, unfortunately they came back with information late and to do the cuts um, I believe MMB is going to do the, the cuts um, in that area so sorry that's a long answer it's a with the four funds uh, each one was a little bit different but it's a great question Representative Heinzman Thank you, Madam Speaker. If uh, Chair Lilly would continue to yield. He will yield, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My last question would simply be along the uh, lines he was explaining. Uh, Chair Lilly was mentioning that um, there is going to be a loosening of some of the requirements um, to make sure that uh, the funds can be used, which I think in, in most cases makes a very, uh, makes a lot of sense, makes uh, a lot of sense to make those dollars available in spite of the COVID-19 uh, problems. Uh, I am wanting to know uh, what protections are in place to make sure that those funds can't be misappropriated and uh, how confident is, are you, Chair Lilly, that that's not going to happen as uh, we have seen in times past? Representative Lilly. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker and uh, uh, Lead Heitzman. Uh, that also is a great question. Uh, um, and uh, I think we are really trying to respect uh, the changing world and the need uh, with uh, the COVID and, uh, you know, everything is complicated, uh, you know, like a burn unit uh, going out or uh, different things. But this is the arts area, of course. But uh, no, um, um, there has been uh, early in the uh, legacy fund, there was some uh, um, uh, not appropriate uses. And uh, the, hopefully those lessons, not hopefully, they better be uh, learned. Uh, I've got my friend over here to the right, uh, uh, Representative Green, who's uh, uh, been diligent. And uh, actually, I greatly respect him for that. Uh, um, but uh, anybody that gets these funds know that, uh, that these are special dollars that uh, Minnesotans have put into this fund. And certainly the bar is very high and the expectation is that good work is done. And uh, I, I, like you, uh, Lead Heitzman and uh, others, I'd be very disappointed if, uh, if they weren't spent wisely to, to, uh, um, to help us through this situation. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I appreciate uh, Chair Lilly's comments. Uh, that will be enough. Thank you. The member from Manoman, Representative Green. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I will have a couple of questions for Chair Lilly, but uh, just want to go over some numbers for you. Uh, once again, we see uh, a lot of uh, land being purchased and a lot of land being going into conservation easements and in this particular bill even during a time of downturn uh, when when the people who are paying this money in on every single thing they buy in Minnesota uh, we continue to buy more land and in this particular uh, bill we have uh, all over 
well, I'll just say it's uh, 9,621 acres uh, in fee that, that they'll be purchasing, another 9,498 uh, acres in conservation easements. So that's about 19,000 acres that'll be out of production in Minnesota again. And we're already at about a third of the land in Minnesota that's no longer, um, well, it's in some form of public entity. It's not, uh, not usable, not taxable, and everybody else makes up the difference. But out of the 9,600 acres that's being purchased here, uh, nearly 6,000, so would be 5,837 acres, it will not be getting PILT payments on it, where only 3,700 will. And this is really important to us, and this is something that I talk about all the time, because not only do we lose the tax value in, in greater Minnesota when this land goes away, we also lose the ability for young families to move there. It drives up the cost of our land, and uh, it's just really, really difficult for anybody to start a family uh, and want, uh, who wants to realize the American dream because the state continues to buy up this, this property. Uh, the other thing is, is when, when this land goes in and, and it's uh, without kilt, what that generally means is that this land is not uh, even retained by the state. In some form or another, it goes into the federal government or some other agency such as that. So this is not, not a good idea. And uh, some of the comments made here today are so true, and I hope people read between the lines and, and, uh, and listen to those comments, because we hear of the hard work of the um, Outdoor Heritage Council, and uh, we only met a couple times on this bill. And for the years that I've been here and worked on these legacy bills, very seldom, if ever, do we uh, veer off the path of what's recommended to us. And it's almost like well, there's not even a reason for us to be there because why don't we just wait for the agencies or the uh, councils to put this stuff forward and there's very little oversight on any of it as we saw with the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Now because we asked questions, they did uh, say they changed their policy, but they also refused to change their curriculum and their, uh, the way that they do things because they weren't going to put uh, any uh, restrictions on the way they spent the money and apparently the legislature just said okay. So those things are, are just unacceptable, just unacceptable. There is another issue here um, with the land that uh, the DNR now is going to be uh, managing another 18,000 acres here depending on how much they give to the feds. And they can't manage what they've got and I can't stress that enough, members. Uh, I know that uh, the White Earth Nation right now has been offered a, a parcel of land from the DNR for a dollar, and it's, uh, it's state land, and they're trying to dump it because they can't afford to manage it. They can't afford what they have. They're not managing the land. If, if you would take the time to come out to greater Minnesota and see the shambles that our state land is in, you'd be very surprised. And I've recommended to my tribe they don't take it because even though they're getting it for a dollar, it comes with the stipulations that they have to manage it in the same way the DNR requires them to, but the DNR can't afford to do it, so how can our tribe afford to do it? So to continue buying up this property, to continue to let these uh, funds go through unchecked is, uh, is just simply simply not, a, not acceptable. And I, and I did hear that uh, Representative Heinzman asked a question that, that I had, but I didn't really get uh, an answer that I understood. So maybe if Representative Lilly would yield for a question. He will yield. Representative Green. Uh, thank you, Madam Ch Speaker. So, uh, Representative Lilly, on, uh, on the reserve funds, now uh, you said that there was some funds still in reserve, but I didn't see that. So maybe I missed something in between the last time uh, you guys met and, and worked on this bill. So how much money is still left in the reserve and in which accounts is that uh, reserve available to? Representative Lilly. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and Representative Green. Uh, um, so what I was referring to uh, uh, was in the Lassard sams portion of the bill, and maybe I mistoke, but I thought I understood that they had not spent the, the bottom line. We, uh, we respect uh, the 5% in all funds, uh, leaving that on the bottom line, but I, my, it was my understanding that they had, uh, had a little above that, whether that was turn bad projects 
that kind of left a little bit on the bottom line or if it was left intentionally and maybe uh, Representative Fabian or Re Representative Becker Finn could speak to that. But that was my, uh, my understanding that there was a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot, but it helped. And then the forecast uh, didn't come back as bad as at that point as maybe as we thought. So I think originally we were thinking we'd, we'd have to cut even deeper so the cuts uh, weren't as great. So that's why it ended up being around 15% to my understanding. And then since, uh, since I'm up, I, I, I just wanna say that these, these purchases are, uh, are very targeted. They're not, uh, you know, they respect what you're saying. Uh, and I know you've been saying that for years, but a lot of the, is my, from following it, and when I was a member, we res um, a lot of the purchases have moved. They're not uh, buying as much land, but they may uh, buy land that's like a connecting parcel. And, uh, and to be clear, the locals are cons consulted. And uh, often, often what happens too is, uh, you know, we have people that want to sell their land. There's people that want to buy, and there's also uh, people that want to sell. So you get into the property rights arguments as well. But no, I very much uh, respect your, your question. And Representative Green. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I still don't think I got a clear answer, but I'll look that up because when I was looking at this, as it was coming in, it looked to me like the reserves were gone. And so uh, I want to double check on that because should something happen then, uh, and the money already uh, is allotted to be out there, it's, it's harder then to go back and reduce those projects when there's already people working on them, so we need to look at that. But uh, I, I will address the, the people wanting to sell their land as the people wanting to buy it. Uh, because uh, last fall I also, I got another call, which I do get quite a few, but this was a, uh, one that involved a lot of land, and it was, it was south of me, but it was good farmland. And there was a young farmer who had been renting it for the few years that he had been farming, and the people that he was renting from wanted to sell it. And he was actually outbid by the state of Minnesota. And you talk to the DNR, and they'll tell you that doesn't happen, but when I talk to the folks on the ground, they say it absolutely happens. And now he's got, uh, I think it was like 2,600 acres, something like that, in this one area that, that was affected. How much they actually bought, I don't know. But uh, yes, the state did come in and purchase that. And so as far as a willing buyer and a willing seller, what I've been asking for years is, and never gotten an answer, and still haven't, is how much does the state want? With a third of our, our property and our landmass already gone into uh, an area where no private person can have access to it again, how much do you want and how much are you going to keep buying? And so at some point, the buyer, or in this case the state, should be able to say, this is what we want and we don't want any more than this. And as long as we continue to take state funds and bid against people on, for private property, yeah, we're going to be able to outbid them because they have restrictions and we apparently don't. And so uh, I've heard the arguments that the state can only pay so much, but they get around that and they get around it in different ways. And one way is to go through the non-government agencies like the Ducks Unlimited and Pheasants Forever because they can go in and pay large amounts. They're still getting the same money and then later they turn the land back to the state. So it's a problem. So I won't be supporting the bill today. That's probably not a surprise for anyone. But uh, this, uh, this still has a uh, tremendous amount of problems. And I will say I do recognize that there's good projects. I'm not saying every project is bad. But I'm saying it is our job to oversee these things, and I don't believe that we're doing a great job of that. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, so, and I, I can answer a couple of the questions too, just to clarify some things. Uh, so first, first, I wanna just remind folks that in 2008, the Minnesotans overwhelmingly voted in favor of the legacy amendment. And our state constitution states that the dollars dedicated to the Outdoor Heritage Fund may be spent only to restore, protect, and enhance wetlands, prairies, forests, and habitat for fish, game, and wildlife. Especially important now, these dollars will keep important natural resources initiatives going, even at a time when so much is uncertain. This investment in our state will have impacts now for those working on the projects and protect the Minnesota we love for future generations. These public lands belong to all of us, and our access to the great outdoors is especially meaningful during these challenging times. 
And I, I encourage folks to find a, a WMA or other state land and remember that it's not just our state parks that belong to all of us and there, there are many ways to access the outdoors uh, and especially to keep uh, socially distant at this time. Uh, some of our, we have WMAs across the state uh, in, including, you know, within easy driving distance to the metro area and all the way up to uh, the north end of the state and the south end of the state, you know, whether you uh, hunt grouse or pheasants or just want to go for a, a hike in the woods, those are all accessible to us. Uh, in addition to the dollars allocated, our bill this year includes an important provision to enhance transparency and citizen access to the work that we do. This provision will require that meetings be live streamed and saved for future access. Uh, as we discuss uh, funding these dollars that belong to all of us, I think it's imperative that the public understand how we got to those decisions and uh, what kind of testimony and information we are hearing uh, as we go forward. We are ultimately accountable to the public and I hope that this effort uh, towards greater transparency will be extended to other areas of our government in the future as well. Uh, I do really want to thank the citizen members of the Outdoor Heritage Council. We put in many long hours together over the course of the entire year and many of the members travel great distances to participate in our meetings. Uh, it has been really rewarding to work with all of you to get through this final product that we got to together. And so to that, these recommendations were unanimous coming out uh, from the council, and that's a council that includes uh, both DFL and Republican legislators as well as citizen members. And the only changes that were made to the funding was the 15% uh, reduction proportionally to each project to reflect reduced sales tax revenue. Uh, this 15% uh, haircut decision was made by our council chair and vice chair. Uh, and I do want to note that they are both citizen members and not former elected officials. Uh, we did confirm that all these projects are scalable and I think that they made the right decision uh, regarding that proportional cut that is fair to each of the projects that was passed unanimously by the council. Uh, as well, there is a 5% reserve in the account uh, that will stay in the account as required by law. Uh, finally, while uh, partisan games may be disrupting other things, this is a bill that members of the council can be really proud of and members we can be proud to vote yes for today. Thank you. The member from Martin, Representative Gunther, wishes to be recognized. Representative Gunther. Thank you, Madam, Thank you, Madam Chair. And members, uh, as a former chairman of the Legacy Committee, I recognize much of the conversation has gone on already, but there's a difference between where Steve Green lives and where I live. We have very few acres of public lands for hunting and and uh, we cherish them very much. We encourage people from all over the state to come hunt pheasants. We have a great pheasant crop. Feel free to come down here. But there's a lot of things he mentioned that I helped him start out with the steel. I, I, he didn't need much help, but when I first got on as chairman of the Legacy Committee, I had a very good mentor, Mary Murphy, not only told me what I should do, but she put it down on a piece of paper and I hope uh, we give credit to those chairmen before because this is one of the most nonpartisan committees in the legislature. This is a committee that does nothing but benefit people from all over the state. And I'm totally amazed at how much hunting and fishing land there is in the seven county metro area and how much they, they enjoy the benefits of the legacy committee like us people in greater Minnesota. So I encourage everyone to vote for this bill and I applaud Chairman Lilly for the great job that he did. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, the author of the bill, Representative Lilly. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you members. I was Pretty happy to hear uh, former Chair uh, Gunther there. Uh, boy, we're going to miss him. Good, good person. But no, it's uh, it's been an honor, and uh, you know, I, I've talked to all the previous chairs, and and we have tried to uh, to do the good work here for Minnesota as they did, laying a great base. 
Um, you know, I'm just lucky to be at the helm right now, but it, uh, you know, we have a great committee and uh, it was a, such an unconventional year we, with this COVID. We just, uh, we kind of actually wanted to dig in and look into different bills and we just didn't get the opportunity. And I really, uh, there's so much good work that's going on in here and it you know this this legacy is a amendment and the work that it does all over minnesota is still hugely popular and i really want to just just quickly i want to thank my staff uh, mike molzon and uh, uh, katie uh, hirsch and also amy uh, with your team um, she's actually helped quite a bit too and callie from the past but uh, our nonpartisan staff, man, we've got a team. Um, we are so lucky. Uh, Helen Roberts, uh, Janelle Taylor, Mary Mullen, and Brad Hagmeyer, you know, they're competitive a little bit with the people across the street, which, uh, which I like. <laughs> and uh, of course, they're competitive with us. Even one of them's got a nickname. He's called Senator even. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty proud of our work. But the, the bottom line is uh, this work is, it's really vital. We don't hear a lot about the arts community and uh, the wisdom of uh, the leader uh, Winkler. We got to we got together with the arts uh, community on a, a Zoom meeting, and you know, there's 1,800 organizations around the state that are doing arts work, and um, they're really struggling. You know, it's like not tomorrow um, a, a play starts up or anything like that. I mean, it's going to take a while, and and these communities are just like everything else is struggling. So um, this bill is going to make a difference. But thank you uh, to uh, hearing the bill today and uh, very much appreciate the discussion and, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, hopefully your green votes. Hearing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members on the phone, please be ready when your name is called in alphabetical order. Members, as a reminder, we are voting on House File 2682. Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Backer. Uh, Backer, aye. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker. Excused. Becker Finn. Becker Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson A, aye. Carlson A, aye. Carlson L. Carlson L, aye. Carlson L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Davids. David's aye. David's aye. Daphne. Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Edelson. Edelson, aye. Edelson, aye. Elkins. Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Erickson. Erickson, aye. Erickson, aye. Fabian. Fabian, aye. Fabian, aye. Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Franzen. Franzen, aye. Franzen, aye. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, no. Grossel. Grossel, nay. Grossel, no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, no. Grunhagen, no. Gunther. Gunther, aye. Gunther, aye. Haley. 
Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hanson. Hanson, aye. Hanson, aye. Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Hausman. Hausman, aye. Hausman, aye. Heinrich. Heinrich, no. Heinrich, no. Heinzman. Heinzman, yes. Heinzman, aye. Her. Her, aye. Her, aye. Hertos. Hertos, aye. Hertos, aye. Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Howard. Howard, aye. Howard, aye. Hewitt. Hewitt, aye. Hewitt, aye. Johnson. Johnson, aye. Jordan. Jordan, aye. Jordan, aye. Jurgens. Jurgens, aye. Jurgens, aye. Keel. Keel, aye. Keel, aye. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, aye. Cleavorn, aye. Cagle. Cagle, aye. Cagle, aye. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, aye. Katiza Watoon, aye. Kosnick. Kosnick, no. Kosnick, no. Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, aye. Kunish Podin, aye. Layman. Layman, aye. Layman, aye. Lee. Lee, aye. Lee, aye. Lesh. Lesh, aye. Lesh, aye. Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, aye. Lean, aye. Lily. Lily, aye. Lippert. Lippert, aye. Lippert, aye. Lislegard. Lislegard, aye. Lislegard, aye. Long. Long, aye. Long, aye. Lucero. Lucero, no. Lucero, no. Lewick. Lewick, aye. Lewick, aye. Mahoney. Excused. Man. Man, aye. Man, aye. Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Mason. Mason, aye. Mason, aye. McDonald. McDonald, no. McDonald, no. Mecklen. Mecklen, nay. Mecklen, no. Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Moeller. Moeller, aye. Moeller, aye. Moran. Moran, aye. Moran, aye. Morrison. Morrison, aye. Morrison, aye. Munson. Munson, no. Munson, no. Murphy. Murphy, aye. Murphy, aye. Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Nelson M. Nelson M, aye. Nelson M, aye. Nelson N. Nelson N, aye. Nelson N, aye. New. New I nor nor I nor I Nornus Nornus I Nornus I Novotny Novotny no O'Driscoll O'Driscoll no Olson Olson I Olson I O'Neill O'Neill no O'Neill no Palowski Palowski I P P Pulowski, aye. Purcell. Purcell, aye. Purcell, aye. Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Pearson. Pearson, aye. Pearson, aye. Pinto. <laughs> Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Poppy. Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Poston. Poston, aye. Poston, aye. Pryor. Prior, aye. Prior, aye. Quam. Quam, no. Quam, no. Richardson. Richardson, aye. Richardson, aye. Robbins. Aye. Robbins, aye. Runbeck. Runbeck, no. Sandell. Sandell, aye. Sandell, aye. Sandstead. Sandstead, aye. Sandstead, aye. Sauk. Sauk, aye. Sauk, aye. Schumacher. Schumacher. 
Schumacher, I. Schumacher, I. Schultz. Schultz, I. Schultz, I. Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Stevenson. Stevenson, I. Stevenson, I. Sundin. Sundin, I. Sundin, I. Swazinski. Swazinski, I. Tabke. Tabke, I. Tice. Tice, I. Tice, I. Torkelson. Torkelson, I. Erdahl. Erdahl, I. Erdahl, I. Vang. Vang, I. Vang, I. Vogel. Vogel, I. Vogel, I. Wagenius. Wagenius, I. Wagenius, I. Waslawick. Waslawick, I. Waslawick, I. West. West. West, no. West, no. Winkler. Winkler, I. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, I. Wolgamot, I. Zhang J. Zhang J, I. Zhang J, I. Zhang T. Zhang T, I. Zhang T, I. Joachim. Joachim. Speaker Hartman. Joachim. Joachim I. Joachim I. Joachim I. There being 110 ayes and 21 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 4597. The clerk will report the bill. Sorry. Sorry. Just one of them. <laughs> House File number 4597, number six on the calendar for the day, an act relating to horse racing, the first engrossment. There are no amendments to the bill. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 4597. Third reading. I recognize the author of the bill, uh, Representative Tabkey, to explain his bill. 
Thank you very much, Madam Speaker and members. I uh, rise today to, in support of House 4597. This, uh, this bill, uh, we've worked uh, together with the Senate on getting COVID-related issues taken care of for the Minnesota Racing Commission. So I'm uh, proud to have uh, the work with uh, Representative Albright on this, as well as Senator Pratt over in the Senate. So we've gotten a lot of good things done here. This bill does a few things, and uh, it's important to recognize that these are only COVID-related issues, and they all expire on uh, December 31st of 2020. So this is just a temporary bill during the COVID uh, crisis that we're all experiencing. So this does a couple different things. One is it uh, allows purse money to be used in a uh, diversified manner so that it can go to different uh, issues for the horsemen. Uh, second thing it does is it uh, this summer all of uh, racing in at running aces as well as at Canterbury Park will be going forward without crowds until uh, crowds are allowed. So horse racing will continue this summer. And so uh, this bill allows for the uh, advanced deposit wagering, which happens on races to uh, go from 1% to 2% uh, into uh, the state's funds. And so that those funds will then be uh, used to offset costs of racing while everything is so difficult today. Last thing that this bill does is it allows for less than 50 days of racing, allows some flexibility for the Minnesota Racing Commission in order to uh, get some more things done. So thank you very much, everyone, for your support. Discussion to the bill. Hearing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members on the phone, um, please be prepared when your name is called. We are voting on House File 4597. The clerk will take the roll. Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Backer. A backer, aye. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker, excused. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, I. Bierman. Bierman, I. Bierman, I. Bo. Bo, I. Bo, I. Brand. Brand, I. Brand, I. Cantrell. Cantrell, I. Cantrell, I. Carlson, A. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, A. I. Carlson, L. Carlson, L. I. Carlson, L. I. Christensen. Christensen, I. Christensen, I. Claflin. Claflin, I. Claflin, I. Considine. Considine, I. Considine, I. Daniels. Daniels, I. Daniels, I. Doubt. Doubt, pass. Davids. Davids, I. Davids, I. Daphne. Daphne, I. Daphne, I. Dean. Dean, I. Dean, I. Damoth. Damoth, no. Damoth, no. Detmer. Detmer, I. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Eklund. Eklund, I. Eklund, I. Edelson. Edelson, I. Edelson, I. Elkins. Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Erickson. Erickson, I. Erickson, I. Fabian. Fabian I. Fabian I. Fisher. Fisher I. Fisher I. Franzen. Franzen I. Franzen I. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg I. Garofalo. Garofalo yes. Garofalo I. Gomez. Gomez I. Gomez I. Green. Green no. Grossel. Grossel, no. Grossel, no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, no. Grunhagen, no. Gunther. Gunther, I. Gunther, I. Haley. Haley, I. Haley, I. Halverson. Halverson, I. Hamilton. Hamilton, I. Hamilton, I. Hansen.
Hansen. Hansen, I. Hansen, I. Hassan. Hassan, I. Hassan, I. Hausman. Hausman, I. Hausman, I. Heinrich. Heinrich, no. Heinrich, no. Heinzman. Heinzman, no. Heinzman, no. Her. Her, I. Her, I. Hertos. Hertos, no. Hertos, no. Hornstein. Hornstein, I. Hornstein, I. Howard. Howard, I. Howard, I. Hewitt. Hewitt, I. Hewitt, I. Johnson. Johnson, no. Jordan. Jordan, I. Jordan, I. Jurgens. Jurgens, I. Jurgens, I. Keel. Keel, I. Keel, I. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, I. Cleavorn, I. Kegel. Kegel, I. Kegel, I. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, I. Katiza Watoon, I. Kosnick. Kosnick, I. Kosnick, I. Kresha. Kresha, I. Kresha, I. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, I. Kunish Podin, I. Layman. Layman, I. Layman, I. Lee. Lee, I. Lee, I. Lesh. Lesh, I. Lesh, I. Liebling. Liebling, I. Liebling, I. Lean. Lean, I. Lean, I. Lily. Lily, I. Lippert. Lippert, I. Lippert, I. Lislegard. Lislegard, I. Lislegard, I. Long. Long, I. Long, I. Lucero. Lucero, no. Lucero, no. Lewick. Lewick, I. Lewick, I. Mahoney. Excuse. Man. Man, I. Man, I. Mariani. Mariani, I. Mariani, I. Marquardt. Marquardt, I. Marquardt, I. Mason. Mason. McDonald. McDonald, I. McDonald, I. Mac Macklin. Macklin. Macklin, no. Macklin, no. Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Moeller. Moeller, I. Moeller, I. Moran. Moran, I. Moran, I. Morrison. Morrison, I. Morrison, I. Munson. Munson, no. Munson, no. Murphy. Murphy, I. Murphy, I. Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. No. Nelson N. No. New. New. No. Nor. Nor I. Nor I. Nornis. Nornis I. Nornis I. Novotny. Novotny. No. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll. No. Olson. Olson, I. Olson, I. O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Palowski. Palowski, Palowski I. Palowski, I. Purcell. Purcell. Petersburg. Petersburg, I. Petersburg, I. Pearson. Pearson, nay. Pearson, no. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Poston. Poston, no. Poston, no. Pryor. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Quam. Quam, no. Quam, no. Richardson. Richardson, I. Richardson, I. Robbins. 
Robbins, no. Runbeck. Runbeck, no. Sandell. Sandell, aye. Sandell, aye. Sandstead. Sandstead, aye. Sandstead, aye. Salk. Salk, aye. Salk, aye. Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Stevenson. Stevenson, aye. Stevenson, aye. Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Swazinski. Swazinski, no. Tabke. Tabke, aye. Tice. Tice, aye. Tice, aye. Torkelson. Torkelson, no. Erdahl. Erdahl, no. Erdahl, no. Vang. Vang, aye. Vang, aye. Vogel. Vogel, I. Vogel, I. Wagenius. Wagenius, I. Wagenius, I. Waslowick. Waslowick, I. Waslowick, I. West. West, no. West, no. Winkler. Winkler, I. Wagamot. Wagamot, I. Wagamot, I. Zhang J. Zhang J, I. Zhang J, I. Zhang T. Zhang T, I. Zhang T, I. Joachim. Joachim, aye. Joachim, aye. Speaker Hartman. Speaker Hartman. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Mason. Mason, aye. Aye. Ma uh, Purcell. Purcell, aye. Purcell, aye. Speaker's not gonna vote. <clears throat> Fabian. Speaker. Fabian changes from I to no. Fabian changes from I to nay. Erickson. Erickson changes from I to no. Erickson changes from I to no. Franson. Franson changes from I to no. Francis changes from I to nay to no.
There being 97 ayes and 34 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is Senate File 3435. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> Senate File number 3435, number seven on the calendar for the day, an act relating to real estate, the first engrossment. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate File number 3435. Third reading. I call upon the author of the bill, the member from Dakota, Representative Hewitt. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And this bill, uh, I'd like to thank my co-authors, one in the Senate, Senator Housley, uh, Senator O'Driscoll, and Senator Tice, and uh, Representative Wiggum. I'm sorry, Representative, uh, I, I missed on their terms there. Sorry about that. Anyways, um, this bill is fairly simple and forward. What it does is it allows the Department of Commerce to uh, collect the fees and information on our appraisal companies. This bill was worked on by both the financial institutions, the Department of Commerce, and the appraisal companies. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members, we are voting on House fi uh, Senate File 3435. When you hear your name, please respond. Thank you. How the clerk will take the roll. Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Backer. Uh, backer, aye. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker, excused. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, L. Carlson, L, aye. Carlson, L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Davids. Davids, aye. Davids, aye. Daphne. Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Edelson. Edelson, aye. Edelson, aye. Elkins. Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Erickson. Erickson, aye. Erickson, aye. Fabian. Fabian, aye. Fabian, aye. Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Franzen. Franzen, aye. Franzen, aye. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo, yes. Garofalo, aye. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, aye. Grossel. Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Gunther. Gunther, aye. Gunther, aye. Haley. Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hansen. Hanson, aye. Hanson, aye. Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Hausman. Hausman, aye. Hausman, aye. Heinrich. Heinrich, aye. Heinrich, aye. Heinzman. Heinzman, aye. Heinzman, aye. Her. Her. Hertos. Hertos, aye. Hertos, aye. Hornstein. 
Hornstein I. Hornstein I. Howard. Howard I. Howard I. Hewitt. Hewitt I. Hewitt I. Johnson. Johnson I. Jordan. Jordan I. Jordan I. Jurgens. Jurgens I. Jurgens I. Keel. Keel I. Keel I. Cleveborn. Cleveborn I. Cleveborn I. Cagle. Kago I. Kago I. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon I. Katiza Watoon I. Kosnick. Kosnick I. Kosnick I. Krisha. Krisha I. Krisha I. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin I. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin. I'll come back to it. Layman. Layman I. Layman I. Lee. Lee I. Lee I. Lesh. Lesh I. Lesh I. Liebling. Liebling I. Liebling I. Lean. Lean I. Lean I. Lily. Lily I. Lippert. Lippert I. Lippert I. Lislegard. Lislegard I. Lislegard I. Long. Long I. Long I. Lucero. Lucero no. Lucero no. Lewick. Lewick I. Lewick I. Mahoney. Mahoney I. Mahoney I. Man. Man I. Man I. Mariani. Mariani I. Mariani I. Marquardt. Marquardt I. Marquardt I. Mason. Mason I. Mason I. McDonald. McDonald, no. McDonald, no. Mecklen. Mecklen, no. Mecklen, no. Miller. Miller I. Miller I. Moeller. Moeller I. Moeller I. Moran. Moran I. Moran I. Morrison. Morrison I. Morrison I. Munson. Munson no. Munson no. Murphy. Murphy I. Murphy I. Nash. Nash no. Nash no. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. I. Nelson N. I. New. New I, nor. Nor I. Nor I, Nornis. Nornis I. Nornis I, Novotny. Novotny I. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll I, Olson. Olson I. Olson I, O'Neill. O'Neill I. O'Neill I, Palowski. Palowski I. Palowski I. Purcell. Purcell I. Purcell I. Petersburg. Petersburg I. Petersburg I. Pearson. Pearson I. Pearson I. Pinto. Pinto I. Pinto I. Poppy. Poppy I. Poppy I. Poston. Poston I. Poston I. Pryor. Pryor I. Pryor I. Quam. Quam I. Quam I. Richardson. Richardson I. Richardson I. Robbins. Robbins I. Runbeck. Runbeck I. Sandell. Sandell I. Sandell I. Sandstead. Sandstead I. Sandstead I. Sauk. Sauk I. Sauk I. Schumacher. Schumacher I. Schumacher I. Schultz. Schultz I. Schultz I. Scott. Scott I. Scott I. Stevenson. Stevenson I. Stevenson I. Sundin. Sundin I. Sundin I. Swazinski. Swazinski I. Tabke. Tabke I. Tice. Tice I. Tice I. Torkelson. Torkelson I. Erdahl. Erdahl I. Erdahl I. Vang. Bang I. Bang I. Vogel. 
Vogel, I. Vogel, I. Wagenius. Wagenius, I. Wagenius, I. Waslawick. Waslawick, I. Waslawick, I. West. West, I. West, I. Winkler. Winkler, I. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, I. Wolgamot, I. Zhang J. Zhang J, I. Zhang J, I. Zhang T. Zhang T, I. Zhang. Zhang T. I. Yuakim. Yuakim. Hey. I. Yuakim. I. Speaker Hartman. Speaker Hartman. Her. 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 I. Her. I. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, I. Kunish Podin, I. Okay. Hertas. Hertas. Hertas changes from I to nay. Hertas changes from I to nay. There being 124 ayes and eight nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is Senate File 3589. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File Number 3589, Number 8 on the calendar for the day, an act relating to financial institutions. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate file number 3589. Third reading. I call upon the author of the bill, the member from Hennepin, Representative Elkins, to explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a bipartisan, non-controversial community banking bill. It passed the Senate 67 to nothing earlier this week, which is why we're taking it up under its Senate file number. It passed the uh, House... Commerce Committee unanimously last week as well. And with that, I would like to yield to Representative uh, Bob Vogel, who is our resident uh, community banking expert and my co-author on the bill. Representative Vogel. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you, uh, Representative Elkins, for, for bringing this forward. Uh, it is true that we worked on it together. I know there are a lot of bills on the calendar today there has been no opposition. Uh, this is a banker's bank. There's only one of them in Minnesota. It's exclusively there for bankers to do business with. They do not do di business with the public. It was chartered in 1975, and at that time, it had a 51% restriction on having to have Minnesota banks uh, be shareholders. Since then, there's been many other banks in the nation that have uh, uh, mirrored this and, and gone ahead, and now they are starting to merge for efficiencies Bank. And one of the concerns is now with the 51%, no other state has that restriction. As these mergers go on, the possibility exists that rather than keeping it here, it could go someplace else in the case of a merger because of the restriction. Simply that bill, uh, the, the bankers associations, the credit unions are, are fine with it. And the Department of Commerce, as uh, Representative Elkins said, is neutral. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And thank you again, Representative Elkins. Discussion to the bill. 
Hearing no discussion to the bill, the clerk will take the roll on House File 3589. Members, please be ready when your name is called. The clerk will take the roll. You guys ready? Yep. <clears throat> Acom. Acom I. Acom I. Albright. Albright I. Anderson. Anderson I. Anderson I. Backer. Backer I. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, aye. Baker, excused. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, L. Carlson, L, aye. Carlson, L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Davids. Davids, aye. Davids, aye. Davney. Davney, aye. Davney, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth. Detmer, Detmer, I. Draskowski. Draskowski, I. Draskowski, I. Eklund. Eklund, I. Eklund, I. Edelson. Edelson, I. Edelson, I. Elkins. Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Erickson. Erickson, I. Erickson, I. Fabian. Fabian, I. Fabian, I. Fisher. Fisher, I. Fisher, I. Franzen. Franzen. Aye. Franzen, aye. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo, yes. Garofalo, aye. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, aye. Grossel. Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. <laughs> Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Gunther. Gunther, aye. Gunther, aye. Haley. Haley, I. Haley, I. Halverson. Halverson, I. Hamilton. Hamilton, I. Hamilton, I. Hanson. Hanson, I. Hanson, I. Hassan. Hassan, I. Hassan, I. Hausman. Hausman, I. Hausman, I. Heinrich. Heinrich, I. Heinrich, I. Heinzman. Heinzman, I. Heinzman, I. Her. Her, I. Her, I. Hertos. Hertos, I. Hertos, I. Hornstein. Hornstein, I. Hornstein, I. Howard. Howard, I. Howard, I. Hewitt. Hewitt, I. Hewitt, I. Johnson. Johnson, I. Jordan. Jordan, I. Jordan, I. Jurgens. Jurgens, I. Jurgens, I. Keel. Keel, I. Keel, I. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, Senate File 3589, I. Cleavorn, I. Cagle. Cagle, I. Cagle, I. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, I. Katiza Watoon, I. Kosnick. Kosnick, I. Kosnick, I. Krisha. Krisha, I. Krisha, I. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, I. Kunish Podin, I. Layman. Layman, I. Layman, I. Lee. Lee. Lee, I. Lee, I. Lesh. Lesh, I. Lesh, I. Liebling. 
Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, aye. Lean, aye. Lily. Lily, aye. Lippert. Lippert, aye. Lippert, aye. Liss Lagarde. Liss Lagarde, aye. Liss Lagarde, aye. Long. Long, aye. Long, aye. Lucero. Lucero, yes. Lucero, aye. Lewick. Lewick, aye. Lewick, aye. Mahoney. Mahoney, aye. Mahoney, aye. Man. Man, aye. Man, aye. Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Mason. Mason, aye. Mason, aye. McDonald. McDonald, aye. McDonald, aye. Mecklen. Mecklen, aye. Mecklen, aye. Miller. Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Moeller. Moeller, aye. Moeller, aye. Moran. Moran, aye. Moran, aye. Morrison. Morrison. Morrison, aye. Morrison, aye. Munson. Munson, aye. Munson, aye. Murphy. Murphy, aye. Murphy, aye. Nash. Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. I. Nelson N. I. New. New I. Nor. Nor I. Nor I. Nornis. Nornis I. Nornis I. Novotny. Novotny I. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll I. Olson. Olson I. Olson I. O'Neill. O'Neill, I. O'Neill, I. Palowski. Palowski, I. Palowski, I. Purcell. Purcell, I. Purcell, I. Petersburg. Petersburg, I. Petersburg, I. Pearson. Pearson, I. Pearson, I. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Poston. Poston, I. Poston, I. Pryor. Prior, I. Prior, I. Quam. Quam, I. Quam, I. Richardson. Richardson, I. Richardson, I. Robbins. I. Robbins, I. Runbeck. Runbeck, I. Sandell. Sandell, I. Sandell, I. Sandstead. Sandstead, I. Sandstead, I. Salk. Salk, I. Salk, I. Schumacher. Schumacher, I. Schumacher, I. Schultz. Schultz I. Schultz I. Scott. Scott I. Scott I. Stevenson. Stevenson I. Stevenson I. Sundin. Sundin I. Sundin I. Swazinski. Swazinski I. Tabke. Tabke I. Tabke I. Tice. Tice I. Tice I. Torkelson. Torkelson I. Erdahl. Erdahl I. Erdahl I. Vang. Vang I. Vang I. Vogel. Vogel I. Vogel I. Wagenius. Wagenius I. Wagenius I. Waslawick. Waslawick I. Waslawick I. West. West I. West I. Winkler. Winkler I. Wolgamot. Wolgamot I. Wolgamot I. Zhang J. Zhang J I. Zhang J I. Zhang T. Zhang T I. Zhang T. I. Joachim. Joachim I. Joachim I. Speaker Hartman, excused. Damoth. Damoth. Damoth I. Damoth I. There being 132 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 4500. The clerk will report the bill. House File Number 4500, Number 9 on the calendar for the day, an act relating to state government, the second engrossment. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. 
Third reading, House File number 4500. Third reading. I call upon the author of the bill, Representative Nelson from Hennepin, to explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. This bill is about an issue that was brought to the attention of Majority Leader Winkler at one of his town meetings. Many, many grants and non, to nonprofits have an end date of June 30th, 2020. Yet these projects, while being funded, were not able to, to accomplish what, what they intended to do because of COVID-19. Um, we're talking about project, um, employment training projects, um, adult daycare project programming, after school programming and such. And because of, they weren't able to do these things, the money would go away and they're not, they, they weren't able to deliver on their contracts. As we looked into this, we found out this is affecting a lot more grants than just for nonprofits, including research grants at the University of Minnesota. Some of these research grants are seasonal in, in nature and they miss their chance this spring to do the work that they, 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 they contracted to do. Uh, one example of that is the Palmer Amaranth Detection and Eradication Program. Um, because the U of M wasn't able to get out in the field this spring and do this, they, that may be come back at a higher rate. This is a, this is a aggressive uh, invasive prod, uh, um, invasive weed that is threatening our, some of our Minnesota crop farmers. So members, what this bill does and what it allows, it allows MMB to extend these grants by one year on a case by case basis. And I repeat that, this is not a blanket extension but it is even individual grantees must apply to MMB to get an extension on their grants. These are currently funded grants, so there is no new money involved. And in ways and means, uh, after it was asked a um, question by Representative Albright uh, in the in state government finance, we put on a reporting requirement from MMB at the end of this year to come back to the legislature with the report of how many grants were, were a grant of this extension. So members, that's the bill and I stand for questions. Discussion to the bill. The member from Dakota, Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank uh, Chair Nelson for um, a very collaborative process on House File 4500. Uh, we recognize that uh, the next legislature will likely uh, undertake a review of this. And in light of that, uh, the uh, changes that were made to the bill reflect those uh, observations made by both sides of the aisle. So I uh, thank uh, the Chair Nelson for uh, consideration of those changes and I urge members to uh, a green vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Further discussion to the bill. Hearing no further discussion, we will take the roll on the bill. Uh, members, we are voting on House File 4500. Please uh, state your vote clearly when you are called on. The clerk will take the roll. Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. Backer. Backer, aye. Backer, aye. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker. Excused. Becker Finn. Becker Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson A, aye. Carlson A, aye. Carlson L. Carlson L, aye. Carlson L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Doubt. Doubt, aye. Davids. David's aye. David's aye. Daphne. Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. 
Kruskowski, no. Kruskowski, no. Eklund. <laughs> Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. <laughs> Edelson. Edelson, aye. Edelson, aye. Elkins. Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Erickson. Erickson, no. Erickson, no. Fabian. Fabian, aye. Fabian, aye. Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Franzen. Franzen, aye. Franzen, aye. Freiburg. Freiburg votes yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. <laughs> Garofalo. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, aye. Grossel. Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, no. Grunhagen, no. Gunther. Aye. Gunther, aye. Gunther, Haley. Aye. Haley. Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hansen. Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Hausman. Hausman, aye. Hausman, aye. Heinrich. Heinrich, aye. Heinrich, aye. Heinzman. Heinzman, aye. Heinzman, aye. Her. Her, aye. Her, aye. Hertos. Hurtas, aye. Hurtas, aye. Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Howard. <coughs> Howard, aye. Howard, aye. Hewitt. Hewitt, aye. Hewitt, aye. Johnson. Johnson, aye. Jordan. Jordan, aye. Jordan, aye. Jurgens. Jurgens, aye. Jurgens, aye. Keel. Keel, aye. Keel, aye. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, aye. Cleavorn, aye. Cagle. Cagle, aye. Cagle, aye. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, aye. Katiza Watoon, aye. Kosnick. Kosnick, aye. Kosnick, aye. Kreshaw. Kreshaw, aye. Kreshaw, aye. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, aye. Kunish Podin, aye. Layman. Layman, aye. Layman, aye. Lee. Lee, aye. Lee, aye. Lesh. Lesh, aye. Lesh, aye. Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, aye. Lean, aye. Lily. Lily, aye. Lippert. Lippert, aye. Lippert, aye. Lislegard. Lislegard, aye. Lislegard, aye. Long. Long, aye. Long, aye. Lucero. Lucero, no. Lucero, no. Lewick. Lewick, aye. Lewick, aye. Mahoney. Mahoney, aye. Mahoney, aye. Man. Man, aye. Man. Man, aye. Man, aye. Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Marquardt. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Mason. Mason. Aye. Mason, aye. McDonald. McDonald, aye. McDonald, aye. Mecklen. Mecklen, no. Mecklen, no. Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Moeller. Moeller, aye. Moeller, aye. Moran. Moran, aye. Morrison. Morrison, aye. Morrison, aye. Munson. Munson, no. Munson, no. Murphy. Murphy, aye. Murphy, aye. Nash. Do you want it? Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Nelson M. Nelson M, aye. Nelson M, aye. Nelson N. Nelson N, aye. Nelson N, aye. New. New, aye. Nor. Nor, aye. Nor, aye. Nornis. Nornis, I. Nornis, I. Novotny. Novotny, I. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll, I. Olson. Olson, I. Olson, I. O'Neill. O'Neill, I. O'Neill, I. Pulowski. 
Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Purcell. Purcell, aye. Purcell, aye. Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Pearson. Pearson, aye. Pearson, aye. Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Poppy. Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Poston. Poston. Pryor. Pryor, aye. Pryor, aye. Quam. Quam, aye. Quam, aye. Richardson. Richardson, aye. Richardson, aye. Robbins. Robbins, aye. Runbeck. Runbeck, aye. Sandell. Sandell, aye. Sandell, aye. Sandstead. Sandstead, aye. Sandstead, aye. Salk. Salk, aye. Salk, aye. Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Scott. Scott, aye. Scott, aye. Stevenson. Stevenson, aye. Stevenson, aye. Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Swazinski. Swazinski, aye. Tabke. Tabke. Tabke, aye. Tabke, aye. Tice. Tice, aye. Tice, aye. Torkelson. Torkelson, aye. Erdahl. Erdahl, aye. Erdahl, aye. Vang. Vang, aye. Vang, aye. Vogel. Vogel, aye. Vogel, aye. Wagenius. Wagenius, aye. Wagenius, aye. Waslowick. Waslowick, aye. Waslowick, aye. West. West, aye. West I Winkler. West I. Winkler I Wagamot. Wagamot I. Wagamot I. Zhang J. Zhang J I. Zhang J I. Zhang T. Zhang T I. Zhang T I. Yuakim. Yuakim I. Yuakim I. Speaker Hartman excused. Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Poston. Aye. Poston, aye. Aye. There being 124 ayes and eight nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 3103. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 3103, number three on the calendar for the day, an act relating to human rights, the first engrossment. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the, it, the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 3103. Third reading. I call upon the member from Ramsey, the author of the bill, Representative Moran. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speakers and members, House File 3103, uh, also known as the Crown Bill, which means creating a respectful and open world for natural hair, was launched as an effort to change societal biases and discrimination against African American women and men, natural textures, and hairstyles. According to the Crown Research Study, completed in 2009 by the Joy Collective, African American women are 80% more likely to change their natural hair to meet the Eurocentric standards of appearance, social norms, or expectations at work. African American women are 50% more likely to be sent home or know of an African American woman sent home from the workplace 
because of her hair. African American women are 30% more likely to receive a formal, formal grooming policy in the workplace. The Crown Coalition was co-founded by the Dove, the National Urban League, Color of Change, and the Western Center on Law and Poverty, and is supported by over 50 other NGOs and nonprofits. In July of 2019, the Crown Act was signed into law in both California and New York. New Jersey came the third state to make the Crown Act law in December of, 19, of 2019. It also has been introduced in Congress, in the House, and in the Senate. Locally, the Urban League Twin Cities, the Council for Minnesotans of African Heritage, and the City of St. Paul African American History Month Committee are all supportive of this bill. As the National Urban League is a co-founder of this coalition, this is a priority bill for the Twin Cities chapter. Language from this bill was drafted off the, uh, the model in, in, New York in, in New York legislature and expands the definition of the term race in the Minnesota Human Rights Act as the follow. Race means inclusive of race, including but not limited to hair textures, hairstyles such as braids, locks, and twists. And I know many of you may think, like, in the 21st century, do this really exist? Do, are people discriminated? Are African Americans discriminated because of their hair in our schools, in the workplace? And I would say to you, yes. The day before, I was to introduce the Crown Bill in my first committee. I received an email from a mother and I would like to share that email with you now. <clears throat> she said, I want to write to say thank you for introducing this legislation. As a mother of a mixed race children, I have seen them struggle with teachers and school officials making inappropriate comments about their hair. Also, my husband has been asked to shave his dreadlocks in order to be hired for a position on several occasions. This year at the youth in government, my daughter drafted a false bill to end the discrimination of natural hair, and she presented it to her cohorts. It was really astounding how many people were surprised that hair discrimination happens, and many kids were against their bill because it didn't impact them. When I showed her the story that you had introduced the Crown, Bureau, the Crown Act here in Minnesota, she started crying because this was so personal to her. We don't live in your district, but we were wondering how we can help to get this passed. Also, my daughter would love the opportunity to meet you in person and say thank you. And so this came in an email to me the day before the bill was heard for the first time. I immediately respond to her and told her, you know, how sorry I was that her daughter had continuously been teased and taunted in school and no one was there to defend her or to make sure it didn't happen again. And I also said to her, you know, and it was a school day, and I said to her, the best way that you can be helpful and your daughter can be helpful and be seen and be heard is to testify. And the mother immediately wrote back and said, thank you, we will be there. And at first hearing her daughter testify in support of this bill. She was brave, she was articulate, she was beautiful, and I was excited to have her there to, uh, to meet her, a courageous young girl who wants to make a difference for herself and so many other young girls. Members, I uh, stand in questions. Do you have any questions in regards to this bill? And, and hope that I can get your support of House File 3103. Thank you. Representative Richardson.
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I'd like to thank uh, Representative Moran for bringing uh, this uh, very important bill forward. Blocking people with natural hairstyles from a desk in a classroom, from a high school wrestling match, or from attending their own high school graduation is discrimination. Denying people access to economic security or advancement, not because of the quality of their work, but for the natural characteristics of their hair is discrimination. It is sad commentary in 2020 that this and other forms of discrimination persist in Minnesota and around the U.S. And as long as discrimination exists, how can we say equality exists? How can we say equity exists? The viral stories we've seen on social media continue to shine a light on just how far we need to go to end discrimination. This legislation makes sense and it's long overdue. It's an important step forward for equality in our schools and equality in our workplaces. While legislation may not change hearts and it may not change minds, it will give individuals that experience this form of discrimination a recourse, an opportunity be, to be heard, an opportunity to be validated, and an opportunity to be vindicated. And on behalf of all the Black, Indigenous, and people of color that have been subjected to this form of discrimination and unfair treatment, I'm, I'm proud to vote yes on this bill and encourage other members to join me in voting yes as well. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, Representative Hassan. Good morning, Madam Speaker and members, or good afternoon. Today I speak in favor of House File 3103, also known as the Crown Act Bill. I first wanna thank Representative Rena Moran for her commitment to social justice and her courage to lead unpopular and sometimes difficult conversations. For everyone to understand why we're talking about black natural hair and hairstyles, we must comprehend the connection between black hair and black identity. A Senegalese historian named Sheikh Antedweb explains it perfectly. For us Black people, our hair is an expression of the infinite possibilities that emanate from this creative and bearing conciseness. Historically, Black body and Black hair have been policed and expected to be altered to fit into the perception of Eurocentric standards of beauty. According to research, the policing of black hair dates back to slavery time. It, it was reported uh, that slave owners' wives would chop off black women's hair so they aren't deemed attractive by their husbands. Black women spend tons of money to buy hair products and chemicals to tame their natural hair in order to resemble mainstream hair. And those who define the social norm and social contract get penalized by firing, getting fired from their jobs or passing promotion to someone else who's being more attractive. Let's ponder over this for a minute. If hair is tied to success and beauty and black natural hair and hairstyles are considered untamed, unkept and wild, then how does black women who wear their hair naturally climb the ladder of success? I would like to emphasize one key point here which is the haunting effect mm -hmm. that policing black hair has in children's self-esteem and self-worth. We noted that black hair is tied to black identity. So what happens when we convince little girls there, there are parts of their identity they should be ashamed of or change? We do this by relaxing, straightening, and altering their hair so it fits perfectly in society's perception of what a beautiful hair looks like. This means we're teaching kids to change as others won't accept them as who they are. This perception leaves negative impact psychologically and it scars these children forever. No child should ever learn that their identity has hole in it and they should spend the rest of their lives filling that void with something else. As a responsible and just society, we should teach kids to embrace who they are and that they're enough, enough to wear their natural hair. In the words of Maya Angela, phenomenal woman, we should raise phenomenal young ladies who are confident, courageous, purposeful, and daring. Therefore, this issue is personally important to me as I want to be sure that my six-month-old daughter, Samara, grows up in a world that, her, that values her as a whole self. 
I want her to wear her curly hair, natural hair, and style the way she wish. I want her to know that she's more than enough. We need to change this policy for my daughter and for all the little black girls to never learn to worry about altering a part of their identity. We also need to combat the negative perception associated with black natural hair and hairstyles, but that's for another day. I humbly ask you to support the social justice quest and thank you very much. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a question for the bill author, uh, if she's willing to yield. She will yield. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, uh, Chair Moran. Can you confirm that other protected classes in Minnesota, in addition to race, also include creed and national origin? Representative Moran. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Lucero, can you please repeat the question? Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, Chair Moran, can you please confirm that other protected classes in the state of Minnesota, in addition to race, include creed and national origin? Representative Moran. Madam Speaker, Representative Lucero. So <clears throat> the one thing that we know, and also the Department of Human Rights knows is that race encompasses many different characteristics. Many different characteristics makes up a race. And what we're doing with this bill here, and specifically looking at hair, is because within the Department of Human Rights, there have been cases, many cases that has been brought to them in regards of racial biases, racial discrimination. And so we are not defining race here. We're just saying, I'm just saying to you and to us and to the state that race is inclusive of hair textures, including braids, twists, and locks, because that is where we are seeing the most discrimination in this state around uh, race. So it just it makes it inclusive of. It's not defining race. Representative Lucero. Uh, would the bill author continue to yield? She will yield. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker and Chair Moran. Uh, can you please confirm that other protected classes in Minnesota, in addition to race, also include creed and national origin? Representative Moran. Madam Speaker and uh, Representative Lucero. Uh, Representative Lucero, I believe in the state of Minnesota that we do not accept discrimination in any form, and we should not. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would the bill author continue to yield? Yes. She will. Representative Lucero. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Chair Moran. Uh, Chair Moran, can you please confirm that the statutory definition of protected classes in Minnesota, in addition to race, include creed and national origin? Representative Moran. Yes, Madam Speaker and Representative Lucero. Yes, I believe it does. I haven't looked it up at this moment, but we can both look it up. I'm sure there's a definition that, that's out there for us. Um, but I believe the answer to your question is yes. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And if the bill author would continue, continue to yield. Yes. She will. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you, Chair Moran. And when I'm looking at the, the bill language before us here, it says race specifically. Uh, it's calling out or it's singling out race among the other protected classes in Minnesota. It's singling out race to add this definition to and not creed and national origin. Can you specify why you have selected race as an additional uh, definition to add to in a, uh, and not creed, for example. Why can a person or an employer or whoever it might be the perpetrator discriminate against uh, creed, or uh, let me ask it this way. Why did you choose creed, uh, race instead of creed or national origin to, to extend the definition to? Representative Moran. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Lucero. You, you, you know, what I found interesting, uh, Representative Lucero, is that in the state of Minnesota, we do not have a definition of for race. Nor did I, we, want to define what race is because race is encompassed of many different characteristics, including creed. And so well, I'm not here trying to define what it is for you or anyone else because there's many, many, many different characteristics that makes up a race. I am just including in definition that race is inclusive of your hair textures and styles, including locks, braids, and twists. Representative Lucero. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and if she would continue to yield. She will, Representative Lucero. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Chair Moran. And part of the, the concern for me is the, the subjectivity of, as you just described, you, there isn't a definition for race. And so I'm putting myself in the position of an employer. And I am to make decisions. And the, the, the way that I make decisions in terms of policies for my em, uh, employees uh, is best done with an objective definition and an, and an objective standard. And when I'm looking at the bill language here, it says the race is inclusive of traits associated uh, with race, including but not limited to hair texture. So I know the focus of the conversation, as we heard this in, in committee, and now as it's been presented on the House floor, is, is hair texture. But you're saying including but not limited to. So what are some of the other traits that are associated with race that an employer needs to be cognizant of in this what appears to be a very subjective standard? Representative Moran. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Lucero. So the definition is, is this. A race is a grouping of, human, of humans based on shared physical or so social qualities into categories generally viewed as distinct by society. Society has defined that. The term was first used to reference to speakers of a common language and then to denote national affiliation. By the 17th century, the term became referred to physical traits. So that's the, the, the definition that we have for the word race. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And if the bill author would yield for another question, again, like, what are some of the other traits? Because the language says not limited to. What are some of the other traits above and beyond hair that you are uh, suggesting that an employer or others would not be able to uh, make decisions that po that potentially have a, uh, an impact on policies? Representative Moran. So let me give you some categories as, how, as to how we as a country and a world define race. We have American Indians, Alaska Natives, Asian, Black, African Americans, Native Hawaiians, other Pacific Islanders, white. So the difference between race and ethnicity is this. Race is understood by most people as a mixture of physical behavior and cultural attributes. That is where we are with the definitions. And I think, uh, Representative Lucero, that, um, um, well, maybe not, um, that you, those are the definitions of, 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 of race, um, Representative Lozero. That has been deci decided from, it goes back to the 1700s, right? Um, and it's usually as the physical appearance of how we denote what race is of a person, of an individual. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Again, I didn't hear an answer there to my question is what are the additional traits? So you read You just read a definition uh, of, of race and you're associating hair as one of the traits associated with a race. What are the additional traits that are not that are included but not limited to 
per the language that you have before us, the additional traits beyond hair that an employer might be in violation of if that trait is associated with a race? What are uh, uh, some additional traits that I'm looking for? Above here, is it clothes? Is it tattoos? Is it ear piercings? What are the additional traits that you are intending per the bill language before us? I would say other traits could be religion. I say other traits can be whether you're LGBTQ, other traits of discriminations that we have found around, you know, race. But the Census Bureau defined race as a person's self-identification of one's or more social group. An individual can report as, this is how, I'm sorry, you know, a representative Lucario, but you know, this is the definition of race. We can't change it. I'm just saying it's also inclusive of hair. But this is the standard national definition. We, you know, it is defined race as a person's self-identification with one or more social groups. An individual can report as white, black, African, African American, Asian, American Indian, Alaskan Natives. What this bill simply does is says that race is also inclusive of your hair, one's hair, one's texture. It defines it, it extends the norm, what we have currently in statute, to hair. Representative Lucero. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I, I did not. Okay, so what I what I'm asking for additional traits. The answer I just got is that religion is an additional trait associated with race, per what the bill author just said. That sexual orientation she she mentioned LGBTQ as an additional trait that can be associated with race. I guess I've never heard of those being associated with races. Religion doesn't is not associated with a particular race nor is sexual orientation. So I don't, do not understand the, the answer. But she raises another point that I hadn't thought of, which is self-identification. I'm looking for an objective definition. And she said that the definition of race can be how one self-identifies. That's completely subjective. And so how is an employer that potentially has a policy in place in the workplace, and now that with, if this bill were to become law, that that employer would now suddenly potentially be in violation uh, because of the way that somebody self-identified, purely subjective and not objective. And the other concerns that it would have, and I won't uh, continue to ask the, the member to yield, but we clearly haven't seen, or she has not articulated, additional examples of traits associated with race. And that is a huge concern. I think it puts employers in a position that they may not be able to, to definitively take steps to ensure that there isn't discrimination because uh, the, the definition here becomes uh, very loose, it's very subjective, and an employer cannot make policies with a subjective standard. When I look at twists, you know, my, I, and when we heard this bill and built in the committee, I used to have long hair in the back past my collar. And my sister has had long hair her whole life and she's had twists and braids. And I guess I've never in my entire life associated with braids with a particular race. Braids, just like religion, hairstyle is a cross section independent of race. I see it just the exact opposite of what we're trying to do here. Hairstyle can be worn by any person regardless of their race religion, marital status, disability status, age, sexual orientation, etc. Hair is not associated with a particular race. And so members, I have huge concerns with this language because it puts employers in a very bad position. And so I would encourage a no vote. Thank you. The member from Ramsey, Representative Moeller. Thank you.
Thank right. you, Madam Speaker. I, yep. I just wanted to thank Representative Moran for bringing this bill and also point out that we have a third branch of government, the judicial branch, and a lot of times definitions that aren't given in statute are interpreted by the courts. And it's my understanding that race has been in the Department of or the Human Rights Act since 1967, and that there is a whole body of case law that defines the terms that are used in the act. Thanks again to Chair Moran for bringing this bill, and I'll be gladly voting yes. Any further discussion to the bill? The member from Sibley, Representative Grunhagen. Am I unmuted? Representative oh, Grunhagen, you, proceed. Chair. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Moran, I know your heart's in the right place, okay? So you and I, we got elected the same year, so we've known each other quite a long time. But the only thing I'd say is that the, uh, you know, biology and science have advanced greatly in the last several decades. And today, today, based upon genetics and a number of other factors, we know that we only have one race, the human race, okay? We have different ethnic groups, but ultimately we're one race, the human race, which means that all of us are brothers and sisters. <laughs> and that means if you go back far enough in your lineage, some people prefer trees, uh, I'll be sitting on one of the branches, Representative Moran, okay? So I think the bill is well, you know, I'm not questioning any intentions on yours, but I just uh, think it's not taken us quite in the wrong direction. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Moran, would you like to close? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, thank you, uh, members. Um, and I think the bigger question is not trying to get in, you know, creed and and national origin, or origin is, a, um, is a protected class, Representative Lucero. It just is. It always, and that's what it is. And the bigger question is not so much of trying to define race is about discrimination. This is a bill about discrimination. And Representative um, Gruhagen, you know, I know your intents are, are, are good. You know, you have good intentions. But the fact is that um, Discrimination is real. Discrimination happens all the time, um, which is why we have a Department of Human Rights, so that we can validate, validate all human beings. But that is not always the case. There have been numerous cases that have been brought to the Department of Human Rights of people who have been discriminated because of their hairstyle, their hair, natural hair, braids, tw twists, locks. The letter that I read from that mother who said I have mixed children and her children been teased at home and in, in school, whereas a, a teacher stood there and not protected her was not okay. So what this bill simply does, it says discrimination of any kind is not okay, including discrimination of firing someone, creating the policies that um, doesn't allow a person to participate uh, on a job because of their hair. It is, race is inclusive of hair textures and styles. That is simply what this bill does. And um, it's a good bill. And I am really excited that the Democrats was, was able to bring this bill forward, recognizing that, you know, walking around in a colorblind land saying you don't see color is not okay because if you say that, you don't see me. When I step into this body, I know you see my color of my skin. I know that. So it's important that you recognize and validate, you know, if, you know and I would say if you, if, you know, if you have a hard time believing that discrimination is real, it, that's the case when it's not happening to you. So I just wanna thank you all for giving the opportunity to present this bill, talk about this bill and I hope that I can get your support for this bill. Thank you so much. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. <clears throat> Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, aye. Anderson. 
Anderson, no. Anderson, no. Backer. Backer, no. Backer, no. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker, excused. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, aye. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, yes. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, L. Carlson, L, aye. Carlson, L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Doubt. Doubt, no. Davids. Davids, no. Davids, no. Daphne. Daphne, aye. Daphne, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Edelson. Edelson, yes. Edelson, aye. Elkins. Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Erickson. No. Erickson, no. Erickson, no. Fabian. Oh. Fabian. Fabian, no. Fabian, no. Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Franzen. Franzen, no. Franzen, no. Freiburg. Freiburg, vote yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Go Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, no. Grossel. Grossel, no. Grossel, no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, no. Grunhagen, no. Gunther. Gunther, no. Gunther, no. Haley. Haley. Haley, no. Haley, no. Halverson. Halverson, I. Hamilton. Hamilton, I. Hamilton, I. Hanson. Hanson, I. Hanson, I. Hassan. Hassan, yes. Hassan, I. Hausman. Hausman, I. Hausman, I. Heinrich. Heinrich, no. Heinrich, no. Heinzman. Heinzman, no. Heinzman, no. Her. Her, yes. Her, I. Hertos. Hertos, no. Hertos, no. Hornstein. Hornstein, I. Hornstein, I. Howard. Howard, I. Howard, I. Hewitt. Hewitt, I. Hewitt, I. Johnson. Johnson, no. Jordan. Jordan, aye. Jordan, aye. Jurgens. Jurgens, aye. Jurgens, aye. Keel. Keel, no. Keel, no. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, aye. Cleavorn, aye. Cagle. Cagle, aye. Cagle, aye. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, aye. Katiza Watoon, aye. Kosnick. Kosnick, no. Kosnick, no. Krisha. Krisha, no. Krisha, no. Kunish Bodine. Kunish Bodine, aye. Kunish Bodine, aye. Layman. Layman, no. Layman, no. Lee. Lee, aye. Lee, aye. Lesh. Lesh, aye. Lesh, aye. Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, aye. Lean, aye. Lily. Lily, I. Lippert. Lippert, I. Lippert, I. Lislagard. Lislagard, I. Lislagard, I. Long. Long, I. Long, I. Lucero. 
Lucero, no. Lucero, no. Lewick. Lewick, no. Lewick, no. Mahoney. Mahoney, aye. Mahoney, aye. Man. Man, aye. Man, aye. Mariani. Mariani, yes. Mariani, aye. Marquardt, excused. Mason. Mason, aye. Mason, aye. McDonald. McDonald, no. McDonald, no. Mecklen. Mecklen, no. Mecklen, no. Miller. Miller. Miller, no. Miller, no. Moeller. Moeller, aye. Moeller, aye. Moran. Moran, aye. Morrison. Morrison, aye. Morrison, aye. Munson. Munson, no. Munson, no. Murphy. Murphy, aye. Murphy, aye. Nash. Nash, yes. Nash, aye. Nelson M. Nelson M. I. Nelson M. I. Nelson N. Nelson N. I. Nelson N. I. New. New. I. Nor. No. Yes. Nor. I. Nornis. Nornis. No. Nornis. No. Novotny. Novotny. No. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll. I. Olson. Olson. I. Olson. I. O'Neill. O'Neill, pass. O'Neill, pass. Palowski. Palowski, aye. Palowski, aye. Purcell. Purcell, aye. Purcell, aye. Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Pearson. Pearson, aye. Pearson, aye. Pinto. Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Poppy. Poppy, aye. Poppy, aye. Poston. Poston, aye. Poston, aye. Pryor. Pryor. Quam. Quam, no. Quam, no. Richardson. Yes. Richardson, aye. Robbins. Robbins, pass. Runbeck. Runbeck, no. Sandell. Sandell, aye. Sandell, aye. Sandstead. Sandstead, aye. Sandstead, aye. Salk. Salk, yes. Salk, aye. Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Scott. Scott, aye. Scott, aye. Stevenson. Stevenson, aye. Stevenson, aye. Sundin. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Swazinski. Swazinski, no. Tabke. Tabke, aye. Tabke, aye. Tice. Tice, aye. Tice, aye. Torkelson. Torkelson, no. Erdahl. Erdahl, aye. Erdahl, aye. Vang. Vang, yes. Vang, aye. Vogel. Vogel, no. Vogel, no. Wagenius. Wagenius I. Wagenius I. Waslowick. Waslowick I. Waslowick I. West. West I. West I. Winkler. Winkler I. Walgamot. Walgamot I. Walgamot I. Zhang J. Zhang J. I. Zhang J. I. Zhang T. Zhang. Zhang T. I. Zhang T. I. Yuakim. Yuakim I. Yuakim I. Speaker Hortman. Aye. Speaker Hortman I. O'Neill. O'Neill passed. O'Neill passed. Pryor. Pryor I. Pryor I. Pryor I. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Robbins. Robbins, aye. Daniels. Daniels changes from Daniels changes from yay to nay. 
Daniel's changes from I to nay, to no. There being 92 ayes and 39 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 1842. The clerk will report mm. the bill. House File number 1842, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to energy, the second engrossment. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Hennepin, Representative Wiginius. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. House File 1842 uh, spends part of the renewable development account that was created as part of the agreement between Excel and the people of Minnesota when we agreed to keep nuclear waste in Minnesota. When Minnesotans agreed to keep nuclear waste in Minnesota, there were conditions put in the contract between the state and Northern States Power, now XL. One was creating a fund with dollars provided by XL that would jumpstart a transition to renewable energy. There's approximately $80 million in this account now. After this bill passes, approximately 55 million will remain. The dollar amounts and the language in the bill were agreed upon by Senator Osmick, who chairs the Energy Committee in the Senate, and with Commissioner Commerce, uh, Commissioner Kelly, who represented the administration. We adopted those provisions where we knew in advance that we would likely find common ground, and we set aside everything else. This agreement funds four things. It provides dollars, for the ongoing solar incentive program uh, run by Excel, specifically on line uh, 2.4, it provides $10 million in 2021. And on line uh, 2.5, it provides 10 million in 2022. The bill also provides $2 million in grants to communities that have lost or will lose an electric generating plant. The money can be used for research, planning, and implementation to address the social and economic impacts of losing the electric generating plant. The bill also provides full funding, $46.4 million, for the Prairie Island Indian Communities Net Zero Project that has a goal of developing an energy system that results in net zero emissions. The final appropriation is for a new turbine to expand the electric generation capacity of Granite Falls' existing hydroelectric generating facility. The last provision in the bill was brought to us by XL. Uh, because of COVID-19, they're worried about perfecting liens when they issue bonds. One of the bond requirements is that a lien is perfected within five business days after the pricing of the bonds. Normally those are recorded in person, but that's not working now. 
So this provision says that from now until December 31st, Excel can also find, file with the Secretary of State. It will continue to file with counties. I would be glad to answer questions, and I know there are amendments. There are amendments at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Swazinski moves to amend House File Number 1842. The second engrossment as follows. The amendment is coded A35. Representative Swazinski. Turn, turn it on. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, my voice is loud enough that I thought I was actually on, so I apologize for that. Uh, the the uh, A35 amendment is a, a pretty straightforward amendment. Uh, it really leaves, as Representative Wiginia spoke, a, there's an agreement essentially from, from leadership that set aside a few dollars um, out of this account uh, to specific <laughs> to bipartisan support. And what it you know, we were in unique times, uh, members, uh, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going around the country with businesses closed down, families that can't seem to pay their bills, uh, losing jobs, shuttered businesses and the rest. Um, there's gonna be very few opportunities to give real relief, economic dollars back in the pockets of businesses, individuals, families, uh, mom and pop shops, salon owners, uh, manufacturers across the state. Um, what this amendment does, um, and I would ask for a roll call on it um, as we move this, before we end this, we'll do the, 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 the hands in that. But uh, what it does is essentially that $55 million that was mentioned. Um, Representative Swazinski <laughs> asked if there were 15 hands for a roll call. And um, I don't think there's 15 people in the room. Let me just count. Fourteen people. <laughs> All right, there's fifteen hands. There will be a roll call. Representative Swidzinski. Thank you, uh, everyone in the room, for uh, lending a hand on that issue. Um, so what the bill essentially will do is, is return the $55 million that's potentially going to be left in this account um, if this bill moves forward and return it to those folks that actually paid into it. And so, um, as we know, uh, there's hundreds of millions of dollars uh, over the period of time that it went in this RDA account. And what this would, bill would, this amendment would also do is any future dollars uh, by a future legislature that does not get uh, appropriated uh, would essentially return back to those uh, same ratepayers in the manner in which they paid it. And so I think this is a very straightforward amendment uh, that actually puts dollars back in the hands of businesses, back in the hands of those folks that paid it. Uh, back in the hands of families and, and folks across the state uh, that live within uh, the Excel territory that would have been taxed to pay into it. So um, with that, um, I thank you. Uh, most members should have, or all members should have received a letter uh, from the Minnesota State Chamber. Uh, they support this amendment. You know, they too feel uh, with the COVID-19 uh, and just in general with the economic circumstances as they are within our state and country, that we need to look at unique ways in which that we can provide relief, but also give some certainty to the market that says, you know, we understand that this fund and why it was placed here but we need also need to give some relief and get those dollars back into people's hands. So with that, I'd appreciate a green vote. Representative Wiginius. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, first, let me remind everybody that um, this bill has, is a result of an agreement uh, between the House uh, Senate, represented by Senator Osmick, and the administration represented by Commissioner Kelly. But that's not uh, the reason you should be necessarily voting against this amendment. The important thing here is this amendment attempts to break a contract, and we don't do that. The renewable development account was created as part of a contractual agreement between Excel and the people of Minnesota. The contract was signed by Governor Arne Carlson and 
the then president of Northern States Power, now XL. That was on May 20th, 1994. But this contract is still in effect. Minnesotans agreed to keep nuclear waste in Minnesota, but there were conditions. One condition was that it uh, was referred to in the contract was that the renewable development fund uh, was the renewable development fund and then how to pay for it. That part of the contract is embedded in 116 799 subdivision one. It says how much XL must transfer to the renewable development account. The waste is still in Minnesota. Getting rid of the fund or contributions to the fund would be a breach of the contract between XL and Minnesotans. Members, I remind you the contract is still in force. Vote no on the amendment to break the contract. Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And just in a response on this particular amendment, you know, if you think of XL, they do not pay this tax. They collect this tax from salon owners, from restaurant owners, from farmers, from people across this state. Um, you know, I think it just a small example would be of what this bill would mean. Uh, it wouldn't break the contract. I mean, it would just simply return the money back to those folks if it wasn't spent within a certain period of time. I think it, in, the, in the amendment says by June 30th of that year. So if the legislature couldn't come to agreement and it doesn't affect the agreement that's in place with those four particular bills. If moving forward, if there's dollars left over in the account, those would be returned so that there would be an impetus for legislators to come together to really find common ground on potential uh, projects that they felt from a bipartisan standpoint or not uh, to move forward. And, you know, I think what this would mean is let's say you have a farmer out in west central Minnesota that's in this territory and they have a particular month that their utility bill would be $5,000. Potentially, it could be they could, that farmer or that rancher could receive a check of about $1,200 potentially. And so, you know, I think those are these are not just minute amounts of money. These aren't five or six dollars. It may be for some ratepayers, but for a vast majority, it could be exceptionally large. It could help pay property taxes. And by the way, I would remind everyone today is the day uh, to do that. Um, if you have not done that yet, I think you have a few hours left that uh, you can do that. But uh, that's my reply, and, and I'd appreciate a green vote. Thank you. Any further discussion to the amendment? Seeing none, hearing none. Madam Speaker. Please state your name for recognition. Representative Quam. Representative Quam. Just to correct something that was referenced on the floor about not breaking contracts, there was actually a contract that was null and voided by the legislature in regards to an XL agreement with uh, some biomass facilities. And that was back in the 13-14 uh, term. So even if what the author is saying were true, that has been precedent set back by uh, actual members in that chamber now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Garofalo. Would a representative, thank you, Madam Speaker. Would Representative Wagenius yield for a question? Yes. She will, Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Representative Wagenius, you keep using the word contract in describing this, and I would I would disagree with that. I don't think it's a contract. I mean, just by any technical observation or legal definition, but let's just for the sake of argument, assume that this is a contract. Um, Representative Wagenius, did the DSL break this contract when they went out and raised task fees uh, beyond the original agreement when you and other DSL legislators went out and increased the per task assessments? Was that breaking the contract? Representative Wigenius. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker. Uh, this is a contractual agreement, and let me just read from the contract that was signed by Arne Carlson uh, in May of 1994 and the representative and president of Northern States Power. 
It says, in compliance with Minnesota laws, 1994, chapter 641, the undersigned are hereby contractually bound to the terms of chapter 641. That language is now in uh, statute uh, as 116C799. So yes, we are contractually bound. Um, Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If Representative Wagenius would yield for another question. I will. She will. Representative Garofalo. Uh, Madam Speaker, Representative Wagenius. Okay, so I will, uh, we will not debate that point. We'll say it is a contract. When the DFLers raise the cash fees that Minnesota ratepayers are paying, did the DFL, when they voted to do that and enact that in the law, were they breaking the contract? Representative Wigenius. I don't believe so. The contract uh, basically uh, set a bottom line of what needed to be done. Representative okay, Madam Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wigenius would yield for another question. She will. Representative um, Garofalo. Madam Speaker, Representative Wadinius, when the DSL took the cash fees and ex expanded them beyond Mon uh, Prairie Island and started imposing fees on the Monticello plant, was that breaking the contract? Representative Wadinius. It was not breaking the contract. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And so, members, what we're hearing today is keep in mind that if the taxes go up, and the spending goes up, that's okay, that's, that's fine. But if we try to use one dollar, one penny, to assist ratepayers during an economic crisis, when businesses across Minnesota are folding, jobs are being lost, an unemployment rate over 25%, that, that in and of itself, that's breaking the contract. That's the message you're hearing today. Now, Madam Speaker, members, there are some really good things in the underlying bill I'm glad that the DFL figured out that they were wrong on opposing the Prairie Island um, uh, net zero facility. That was a Republican priority that was enacted in 2018. The House DFL refused to fund it last year. I'm proud of the fact that you guys saw you were wrong about that and you fixed that. But on the cash fees, we are the only state in the country that is taxing carbon-free nuclear power. It's mindless, it has no, no reason for it to be in law anymore. At a minimum, at a minimum, you can't provide one penny of relief to the people paying the bills. Thank you, Representative Swazinski, for bringing this bill forward, this amendment forward. I would strongly encourage people to vote yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Any further discussion on the Swazinski A35 amendment? The clerk will take the roll on the amendment. Acom. Acom, no. Acom, no. Albright. Albright. Anderson. Anderson, I. Anderson, I. Backer. Backer, I. Backer, I. Bonner. Bonner, no. Bonner, no. Barr. Barr, I. Baker, excuse. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, no. Bennett. Bennett, I. Bennett, aye. Bernardi. Bernardi, no. Bernardi, no. Bierman. Bierman, no. Bierman, no. Bo. Bo, aye. Bo, aye. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, no. Cantrell, no. Carlson, A. Carlson, A, no. Carlson, A, no. Carlson, L. Carlson L, no. Carlson L, no. Christensen. Christensen, no. Christensen, no. Claflin. Claflin, no. Claflin, no. Considine. Considine, no. Considine, no. Daniels. Daniels, yes. Daniels, I. Doubt. Doubt, I. Davids. Davids, yes. Davids, I. Daphne. Daphne, no. Daphne, no. Dean. 
Dean, no. Dean, no. Damoth. Damoth, aye. Damoth, aye. Detmer. Detmer, aye. Draskowski. Draskowski, aye. Draskowski, aye. Eklund. Eklund, no. Eklund, no. Edelson. Edelson, no. Edelson, no. Elkins. Elkins, no. Elkins, no. Erickson. Erickson, aye. Erickson, aye. Fabian. Fabian, aye. Fabian, aye. Fisher. Fisher, nay. Fisher, no. Franzen. Franzen, aye. Franzen, aye. Freiburg. Freiburg votes no. Freiburg, no. Garofalo. Garofalo votes yes. Garofalo, aye. Gomez. Gomez, no. Gomez, no. Green. Green, aye. Grossel. Grossel, aye. Grossel, aye. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, aye. Grunhagen, aye. Gunther. Gunther, aye. Gunther, aye. Haley. Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, aye. Hamilton, aye. Hansen. Hansen, no. Hansen, no. Hassan. Hassan, no. Hassan, no. Hausman. Hausman, no. Hausman, no. Heinrich. Heinrich, aye. Heinrich, aye. Heinzman. Heinzman, aye. Heinzman, aye. Her. Her, no. Her, no. Hertos. Hertos, aye. Hertos, aye. Hornstein. Hornstein, no. Hornstein, no. Howard. Howard, no. Howard, no. Hewitt. Hewitt, no. Hewitt, no. Johnson. Johnson, aye. Jordan. Jordan, no. Jordan, no. Jurgens. Jurgens, aye. Jurgens, aye. Keel. Keel, aye. Keel, aye. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, no. Cleavorn, no. Cagle. Cagle, no. Cagle, no. with Wachoon. Katiza Watun, no. Katiza Watun, no. Kosnick. Kosnick, aye. Kosnick, aye. Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, no. Kunish Podin, no. Layman. Layman, yes. Layman, aye. Lee. Lee, no. Lesh. Lesh, no. Lesh, no. Liebling. Liebling, no. Liebling, no. Lean. Lean, no. Lean, no. Lily. Lily, no. Lippert. Lippert, no. Lippert, no. Lislagard. Lislagard, no. Lislagard, no. Long. Long, no. Long, no. Lucero. Lucero, yes. Lucero, aye. Lewick. Lewick, aye. Lewick, aye. Mahoney. No. Mahoney, Mahoney no. Mahoney, no. Man. Man, no. Man, no. Mariani. Mariani, no. Mariani, no. Marquardt. Excuse. Mason. Mason, no. Mason, no. McDonald. McDonald, yes. McDonald, I. Mecklen. Mecklen, I. Mecklen, I. Miller. Miller, I. Miller, I. Moeller. Moeller, no. Moeller, no. Moran. Moran, no. Morrison. Morrison, no. Morrison, no. Munson. Munson, I. Munson, I. Murphy. Murphy. Nash. Nash, yes. Nash, I. Nelson M. Nelson M, no. Nelson M, no. Nelson N. Nelson N, I. Nelson N, I, no. No, I, nor. Nor, no. Nor, no. Nornus. Nornus, I. Nornus, I, Novotny. Novotny, I, O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll, I, Olson. Olson, no. Olson, no. O'Neill. 
O'Neill I. O'Neill I. Palowski. Palowski, no. Palowski, no. Purcell. Purcell, no. Purcell, no. Petersburg. Petersburg, I. Petersburg, I. Pearson. Pearson, I. Pearson, I. Pinto. Pinto, no. Pinto, no. Poppy. Poppy. Poppy, no. Poppy, no. Poston. Poston, I. Poston, I. Pryor. Pryor, no. Pryor, no. Quam. Quam, I. Quam, I. Richardson. Richardson, no. Richardson, no. Robbins. Robbins, I. Runbeck. Runbeck, I. Sandell. Sandell, no. Sandell, no. Sandstead. Sandstead, no. Sandstead, no. Sauk. Sauk, no. Sauk, no. Schumacher. Schumacher, yes. Schumacher, I. Schultz. Schultz, no. Schultz, no. Scott. Yes. Scott, I. Yes. Stevenson. Stevenson, no. Stevenson, no. Sundin. Sundin, no. Sundin, no. Swazinski. Aye. Swazinski, aye. Tabkey. Tabkey, no. Tabkey, no. Tice. Tice, aye. Tice, aye. Torkelson. Torkelson, aye. Erdahl. Erdahl, aye. Erdahl, aye. Vang. Vang, no. Vang, no. Vogel. Vogel, aye. Vogel, aye. Wagenius. Wagenius, no. Wagenius, no. Waslowick. Waslowick, no. Waslowick, no. West. West, I. West, I. Winkler. Winkler, no. Walgamot. Walgamot, no. Walgamot, no. Zhang J. Zhang J, no. Zhang J, no. Zhang T. Zhang T, no. Zhang T, no. You, Joachim. You, no. You, Joachim, no. Speaker Hartman. Speaker Hartman, no. Albright. Albright, aye. Halverson changes from aye to nay. That's it. Murphy. Murphy, no. <laughs> Murphy, no. Lee. He was born no. Lee, no. Lee, no. Okay. Brand. No. Brand changes from I to nay. There being 58 ayes and 74 nays, the motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There's another amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. 
Swazinski moves to amend House File Number 1842, the second engrossment, as follows. The amendment is coded A25. Representative Swazinski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, um, the 825 amendment uh, will simply cap the amount of dollars that will be transferred into the RDA account from an individual cask to $10 million. So over the lifetime uh, of a cask, it would no, no longer contribute uh, any funds because of its existence uh, within the state of Minnesota into the RDA fund when it re once it reaches $10 million. You know, I think the importance of an amendment like this, um, you know, we heard in the last testimony on the last amendment that when we raise the rates on individual casks, that does not breach the contract. This would simply, in a future date, you know, obviously each cask is different from the age in which it has uh, been filled, um, is calculated differently. So once a cask reaches tens million dollars of contributions towards the RDA account, uh, the department would no longer collect uh, funds from that particular cask. And I think, you know, giving relief to future generations uh, from this tax is important. While I'm disappointed that the last amendment failed to gain, garner enough votes uh, to give tax relief to Minnesotans across the state, you know, this will give uh, relief at some point in the future. And I think this is a wise decision to give some market certainty to those that are paying uh, the extra rates, the extra taxes on their utility bills. And I'd ask for your support. Thank you. Representative Wiginius. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this amendment has the same fatal flaw as the last amendment. It's the attempting to breach a contract. I would remind you that in the contractual agreement signed by Governor Arnie Carlson and the, the Bex, uh, then president of uh, Northern States Power, now XL, that contract, it's a short contract, but it specifically says the undersigned are hereby contractually bound to the terms of Chapter 641. Chapter 641 is uh, the statute 116C799. And that statute says um, that uh, the public utility that owns Prairie Island and the nuclear generating plant must transfer to the renewable development account a half a million dollars each year for each dry cask containing spent fuel that is located in Prairie Island plant for each year the plant is in operation and $7.5 million each year the plant is not in operation. Members, the contract is there. Uh, the waste is there. Uh, please vote no. Further discussion to the Svidzinski A25. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. please say no. No. The motion no. does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File Number 1842. Third reading. The member from Wright, Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I remember 1994 very well. It was when my first son was born. It was an amazing time. He is now 26 years old, married and has his, just had his fourth child. And while Representative Wiginius continues to say, talk about the contract, the contract, the contract, well, you know, the terms of that contract has changed throughout time. They first started collecting the cask fee around 1999, 500,000 per cask for Prairie Island. And then in 2007, it was added so, again, from 1999 to 2007, that's uh, almost a decade. They added Monticello at 350000 per cask. At one time, there was a $15 million cap on the casks. So when the casks got to the point where they exceeded potentially that amount, where they got to the cap, they said, oh, no, 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 now we need to collect more. So in total, members, 
since 1999, when we began to collect this money off the backs of the rate payer from Excel Energy Territory, which I am in, $430 million later, we have this monstrosity of a fund. Uh, again, off the backs of widows and poor people in the Excel Energy Territory. They all are assessed this additional tax on a non-carbon emitting resource. We actually have two non-carbon emitting resources here in this great state that are assessed with this tax. And you wonder, okay, so now we're in 2020. How much is it this year that we're collecting off the backs of ratepayers? Well, now we're all the way up to $34 million we far exceeded that $15 million cap, and now we've blown way past it to $34 million in just this year alone. And it will continue to rise as we continue to add additional casks from Prairie Island. So she may continue to call this a contract, but throughout the years, this, the terms of this contract certainly have changed. Now let's go to the actual spending in this bill. Now, one would think, since Monticello is named in this bill, that I, who actually serve on the, uh, the LEC and am the representative for Monticello and served four years on the Energy Committee, would have been consulted about being included in this bill. That would be logical to think that. Well, members, I was not. And isn't it nice that, re that Senator Osmick made the deal for me? I didn't even know he was making the deal. So we're giving $20 million for an extraordinarily expensive solar rewards program. Let's just look at solar in Minnesota for just one moment, members. Do you know that utility scale solar, so large scale solar, that is the preferred method to produce energy with large energy producers like Excel, if you did an RFP today, it would come in at between $40 and $50 a megawatt hour. Not too bad. Then you jump to rooftop solar, which is what the Solar Rewards Program funds. Rooftop solar. Rooftop solar is between 150 and 200 megawatt hours, dollars per megawatt hour. It is the most expensive way to possibly produce solar, but that's what the Solar Rewards Program does, members. Now, when I had helped to change some of this in the past with the RDF to the RDA, um, in concession to get rid of the most expensive solar program that we've ever had in the state of Minnesota, which was made in Minnesota solar, we made a small concession to get a little bit more money and extend for a very short period of time solar rewards. And here we are extending it again. And how much is that, do you say? So this rewards program pays residential customers seven cents per kilowatt hour in addition to the net metering, which is 12 cents. On a commercial side, it's six cents. And maybe that doesn't make sense to most of you in the room, but there are a few that actually know what that means. That's a lot of money. That is an awful lot. And to the tune of $15 million more for the next, well, it's $20 million more for 20, uh, for the next two years, for 2021 and 2022. That is an awfully expensive solar program. The only solar program that might offend me more is the solar gardens program, but we'll save that for another day. So you have before you a bill that a representative Wigenius and Senator Osmick decided what was going to be in it. And, and maybe Representative Wazinski had some say in it because he has a bill in here too for a hydro plant that's not in the Excel Energy Territory. But it's interesting to me to see that $20 million is going to the Solar Rewards Program, which again, is the most expensive way that you can produce solar energy, which is on the rooftop. Or, and then only $2 million for four host communities, one of which is the Monticello Nuclear Power Plant, so that they can begin to transition when their plants Close. Well, that's nice because we've never received anything after hosting the nuclear power plant since 1971. So it's really nice to be thought of, but it certainly is out of scale with what's in this particular bill. I would much rather see 
an end to this program. As, re as many times as Representative Wiginis wants to say this is a contract, the contract certainly has changed multiple times throughout the years to the detriment, may I add, to the ratepayer. So members, I will be voting absolutely no on this bill. I was not consulted, I was not included, and it's really just a little pittance of money for the Monticello Nuclear Power Plant for as long as we have hosted a nuclear power in our, in our territory, in our city. And it certainly is out of scale with where the other spending is. And so I am a hard no on this particular bill. Thank you, members. The member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 10 a.m. Saturday, May 16th. <laughs> sorry, I thought you wanted to speak to the bill, Representative Becker Finn. No, sorry, Madam Speaker. All right. Representative Christensen. Speaker, and Representative Christensen, we're having a little difficulty hearing you. About the Community Energy Transition Grant Program that's included in the bill in um, HF 1842, which is designed to help our state responsibly transition away from fossil fuels by supporting communities that host, um, host all of these, these large plants that will be closing. For these communities, the plants are economic engines that provide significant tax contributions to city and county governments, as well as local schools. They also provide hundreds of high quality, high paying jobs. So with nearly all of Minnesota's largest power plants being considered for retirement in the future, uh, the communities that host the plants face an uncertain future. And that's where we come in. We um, partner with the communities. This bill creates a program at DEED to provide grants to these cities um, and governments to help them cope with the social and economic development challenges that they'll face when the plants close. Uh, in my district, um, the city of Saint or the city of Oak Park Heights um, is home to XL Energy's Allen S. King plant, which will be closing in 2028. Um, property taxes alone from that plant allow for 40 percent, uh, or accounts, excuse me, for 40 percent of the city's annual budget. And so it also contributes a significant amount of funding to the Stillwater School District. So as we anticipate the retirement of the plant within the next eight years, the local governments will incur significant costs. Um, these communities are striving to work creatively and proactively to reshape their local economies in anticipation of the coming transition, but they can't do it alone. So the goal of this program is to create a partnership between um, these communities indeed, and to put a tool in the toolbox to help them in these transitions. Uh, this proposal has received significant support and input from the local communities that would be eligible. Because this initial round of funding is from the RDA, its eligibility is limited to the Excel Service Territory. Cities that will be eligible for these dollars now and in the future include Becker, Granite Falls, Monticello, and Red Wing, as well as Prairie Island. Indian community. So the program has also received uh, support from communities like Cohasset, Fergus Falls, and White Lakes, which are outside of the Excel territory. And I plan to um, move legislation again next year that, that aims to help those folks also. So beyond the communities themselves, nonprofit organizations like Conservation Minnesota and the Center for Energy have also lent their support to the proposal because they recognize that by supporting the host communities um, it is a, clean, it, a key part to our clean energy future. So I want to thank you all members. Um, thanks all on the committee and thanks for all the support, the bicameral support that we've had. And I urge you to support for this proposal and the bill as a whole. Thanks so much. For members participating by remote debate, just to be clear, in the chamber, it's very difficult to hear you, so I would recommend you speak very slowly and that you not use a speaker phone. Uh, Representative Haley. Speaker and members. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. 
I'd like to speak in support of this bill and particularly the provision for the net zero project. And I'd like to remind folks of some background on this project. I've been working with my tribal community, Prairie Island community for over four years as this project was conceived and has evolved over time. This body, the house first passed it in 2018, but unfortunately it got caught up in Governor Dayton's veto for unrelated reasons. Then in 2019, the energy division considered it but chose not to fund the project. I'm happy that efforts were renewed this year and working together with Representative Long and Chair Waginius, we are now at this point to pass this important project. Although these funds in the RDA account have been collected, as you've heard previously, for nearly 30 years, the Prairie Island Indian community, which is the only community in the country that lives right next to a nuclear power plant and where there's storage of nuclear waste. They have never once in the 30 years that these funds have been collected, never received any appropriation for their community. So I'm pleased today that we are finally at the point where we have a bipartisan agreement and I thank Chair Wagenius for her work on that. I'd also like to call out that the bill language states that once the Prairie Island Indian community receives their bid, final bids for the project, that any remaining funds beyond what the project is contracted for will get returned to the RDA fund. I would like to support the previous comments from my colleague, Representative O'Neill, and that the other part of this bill for the host communities isn't anywhere near what will be needed for that transition. I'd also like to call out support for comments by Representative Garofalo and the amendments offered by Representative Swazinski. Had those amendments passed, I think this bill would have had a balanced approach. We need to take another look at that and consider the impact on the ratepayers. But for, for today's vote, I stand in support of the Prairie Island Indian, Indian community and the project going forward for what will be one of the first in the kind in, in the nation for a net zero community. Thank you members and I urge a green vote. Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If the author of the bill will yield for a question. She will. Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Wurgenius, uh, I've sat on your Energy and Climate Committee for a length of time, and I've always asked a question are any of the RDA funding in your bill spent outside of the Excel Energy rate payers area? Representative Wagenius. In this case, um, the only thing that might be considered out of the territory would be the Granite Falls project, but this is a gray area, not a black and white area, because right now Granite Falls is losing taxpayer dollars that supported Granite Falls uh, from Excel uh, because of an energy, uh, a energy plant there that closed. So, I would not make a black and white statement. I would make a gray statement on that project. Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This, uh, this fund, whatever name it has had, in the past has been used throughout the state. When it is a fee paid for by XL area rate payers, does it mean that I support the charge of this to the, uh, of the CAS? And I do think contracts are renego renegotiated regularly. But if you're going to take these kind of dollars from people in my district whose average wage is not the state median, mostly, I believe that this money from now and in the future must be spent, must be spent, at least on the people who pay the fee for it. So, Madam Speaker, Representative Wagenius, I will accept the small figure 
that you've used for Granite Falls as a gray area. I will be voting for your bill today. But in, in the future, I hope we as a legislature realize that when we take money from poor people, we should not be giving it to rich people to make their air cleaner while we do not do the same for the people who we've taken that money from. With that, I'll, I'll we'll end my comments, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. Representative Barr. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, Representative Wagenis keeps referring back to the contract. The contract that she read just a few minutes ago for us that don't have a hard copy in front of us, reference that the, we are contractually obligated, the state and uh, XL Energy are contractually obligated to abide by statutes. That's our job is to write statute, eliminate statute, change statute. So we, uh, by doing, by passing this, if anybody is under the, uh, under the illusion that we are not conforming to the contract, that would be incorrect. We can rewrite that contract to, to put a limit on lifetime cask fees and still be within the contract because the contract refers to the statute. Thank you. Member from Hennepin, Representative Long. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This bill is an important bipartisan compromise to invest in clean energy projects across the state. In particular, I'm pleased it includes my provision to increase investment in the solar rewards program. This program helps reduce the cost of small residential and commercial rooftop solar projects. Solar Rewards typically provides 25% of an average solar installation, meaning every dollar spent leads to $4 worth of investment. Our solar industry is expanding and now provides about 4,000 jobs to Minnesotans. About 1,200 of these jobs are in the rooftop solar space. We have four times more Minnesotans working in solar than a decade ago, and solar jobs are good paying long-term jobs. Solar energy is also rapidly declining in price, and Excel Energy estimates it will be the lowest cost energy resource in our state by 2025 or even sooner. But as costs come down, solar will continue to need assistance over the next few years. This is especially true because we are seeing the expiration of federal solar tax credits for residential customers and the reduction of tax credits for commercial customers. When I might add, tax credits for fossil fuels remain permanently embedded in our tax code. Coupled with the economic downturn due to COVID-19, the next couple of years could be tough ones for our solar industry. That's why it is so important that we are investing an additional $15 million in the solar rewards program for the next several years. This will help our solar industry stabilize and grow to be ready to create even more jobs as solar prices continue to decline. I'm also pleased this bill includes the Prairie Island Net Zero Project, which will be a visionary example of a community entirely reducing or offsetting their emissions when completed, it will be an important example to help other co communities that want to follow their lead. In addition, I'm glad we were able to dedicate $2 million to Rep. Shelley Christensen's bill to assist communities like Oak Park Heights with retiring fossil fuel plants. Folks, fossil fuel power is uneconomic, and it will become only more so. We saw this with Great River Energy's announcement last week, closing its coal plant in uh, North Dakota and building new wind power. It's important that as we make the transition to clean energy, we don't forget the contributions that workers and communities have made to our energy system and that we help support them through this transition. I wanna thank Chair Wagenius for her leadership on this bill and I urge member support. Thank you. Any further discussion? Representative Wagenius. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thanks to members for the conversation. Uh, when we worked on this bill, we looked for common ground, and the dollar amounts and the language in the bill were agreed upon by Senator Osmick and uh, Commissioner Kelly, who was representing the administration. This is a modest proposal based on common, common ground, and I urge your support. Thank you. The clerk will take the roll on House File 1842. Acom. Acom, aye. Acom, aye. Albright. Albright, no. Anderson. Anderson, no. Anderson, no. Backer. 
Backer, no. Backer, no. Bonner. Bonner, aye. Bonner, aye. Barr. Barr, no. Baker, excuse. Becker, Finn. Becker, Finn, aye. Bennett. Bennett, pass. Bennett, pass. Bernardi. Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Bierman. Bierman, aye. Bierman, aye. Bow. Bow. Brand. Brand, aye. Brand, aye. Cantrell. Cantrell, aye. Cantrell, aye. Carlson, A. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, A, aye. Carlson, L. Carlson, L, aye. Carlson, L, aye. Christensen. Christensen, aye. Christensen, aye. Claflin. Claflin, aye. Claflin, aye. Considine. Considine, aye. Considine, aye. Daniels. Daniels, no. Daniels, no. Doubt. Doubt, no. Davids. Davids, no. Davids, no. Davney. Davney, aye. Davney, aye. Dean. Dean, aye. Dean, aye. Damoth. Damoth. Detmer. Detmer, no. Draskowski. Draskowski, no. Draskowski, no. Eklund. Eklund, aye. Eklund, aye. Edelson. Edelson, aye. Edelson, aye. Elkins. Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Erickson. Erickson, no. Erickson, no. Fabian. Fabian, no. Fabian, no. Fisher. Fisher, aye. Fisher, aye. Franzen. Franzen, no. Franzen, no. Freiburg. Freiburg, both yes. Freiburg, aye. Garofalo. Garofalo, no. Garofalo, no. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Green. Green, no. Grossel. Grossel, nay. Grossel, no. Grunhagen. Grunhagen, no. Grunhagen, no. Gunther. Gunther, no. Gunther, no. Haley. Haley, aye. Haley, aye. Halverson. Halverson, aye. Hamilton. Hamilton, no. Hamilton, no. Hansen. Hansen, aye. Hansen, aye. Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Hausman. Hausman, aye. Hausman, aye. Heinrich. Heinrich, no. Heinrich, no. Heinzman. Heinzman, no. Heinzman, no. Her. Her, aye. Her, aye. Hertos. Hertos, no. Hertos, no. Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Howard. Howard, aye. Howard, aye. Hewitt. Hewitt, aye. Hewitt, aye. Johnson. Johnson, no. Jordan. Jordan, aye. Jordan, aye. Jurgens. Jurgens, aye. Jurgens, aye. Keel. Keel, aye. Oh, excuse me. Keel, nay. Keel, no. Cleavorn. Cleavorn, aye. Cleavorn, aye. Kegel. Kegel, aye. Kegel, aye. Katiza Watoon. Katiza Watoon, aye. Katiza Watoon, aye. Kosnick. Kosnick, no. Kosnick, no. Krisha. Krisha, no. Krisha, no. Kunish Podin. Kunish Podin, aye. Kunish Podin, aye. Layman. Uh, Layman, aye. Layman, aye. Lee. Lee, aye. Lee, aye. Lesh. Lesh, aye. Lesh, aye. Liebling. Liebling, aye. Liebling, aye. Lean. Lean, aye. Lean, aye. Lily. Lily, aye. Lippert. Lippert, aye. Lippert, aye. Lislegard. Lislegard, aye. Lislegard, aye. Long. Long, aye. Long, aye. Lucero. 
Lucero, no. Lucero, no. Lewick. Lewick, no. Lewick, no. Mahoney. Mahoney, aye. Mahoney, aye. Man. Man, aye. Man, aye. Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Marquardt. <laughs> Excuse. Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Mason. Mason, aye. Mason, aye. McDonald. McDonald, no. McDonald, no. Mecklen. Mecklen, no. Mecklen, no. Miller. Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Moeller. Moeller, aye. Moeller, aye. Moran. Moran, aye. Morrison. Morrison, aye. Morrison, aye. Munson. Munson, no. Munson, no. Murphy. Murphy, aye. Murphy, aye. Nash. Nash, no. Nash, no. Nelson M. Nelson M, I. Nelson M, I. Nelson N. Nelson N, I. Nelson N, I. New. <coughs> New, no. Nor. Nor, I. Nor, I. Nornis. Nornis, no. Nornis, no. Novotny. Novotny, no. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll, no. Olson. Olson, I. Olson, I. O'Neill. O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Pulowski. Pulowski, I. Pulowski, I. Purcell. Purcell, I. Purcell, I. Petersburg. Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Pearson. Pearson, no. Pearson, no. Pinto. Pinto, I. Pinto, I. Poppy. Poppy, I. Poppy, I. Poston. Poston, I. Poston, I. Pryor. Pryor, I. Pryor, I. Quam. No. Quam, no. Richardson. Richardson, I. Richardson, I. Robbins. Robbins, no. Runbeck. Runbeck, no. Sandell. Sandell, I. Sandell, I. Sandstead. Sandstead, I. Sandstead, I. Salk. Salk, I. Salk, I. Schumacher. Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Schultz. Schultz, I. Schultz, I. Scott. Scott, no. Scott, no. Stevenson. Stevenson, I. Stevenson, I. Sundin. Sundin, I. Sundin, I. Swazinski. Swazinski, I. Tabke. Tabke, I. Tabke, I. Tice. Tice, no. Tice, no. Torkelson. Torkelson, no. Erdahl. Erdahl, no. Erdahl, no. Vang. Vang, I. Vang, I. Vogel. Vogel, no. Vogel, no. Wagenius. Wagenius, I. Wagenius, I. Waslowick. Waslowick, I. Waslowick, I. West. West, no. West, no. Winkler. Winkler, I. Wolgamot. Wolgamot, I. Wolgamot, I. Zhang J. Zhang J, I. Zhang J, I. Zhang T. Zhang T, I. Zhang T, I. Joachim. You are Kim I. You are Kim I. Speaker Hartman. Aye. Speaker Hartman, I. <clears throat> Bennett. No. Bennett, no. Bo. Bo, I. Bo, I. Damoth. Damoth, I. Damoth. I. Is that right?
There being 84 ayes and 49 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Without objection, we will revert to reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is online. Without objection, the reports are adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of Senate files. Second reading, Senate file number 4494. Second reading. Members, we are waiting for a Senate file to arrive. It is up at the revisers because the uh, Senate put an amendment on. We think it will be about 10 or 15 minutes. And we also think that there's no further business before the House today. But then again, we haven't gotten to motions and resolutions. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions online. Without objection, we will take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Not anticipating any further motions, then the only thing we have left to do is to receive the bill from the reviser. So members on the phone and in the chamber can make a determination of whether they want to wait it out. The motion setting the time for reconvening so everybody knows when we're coming back. Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that when the House adjourns today, it would adjourn at 10 a.m. Saturday, May 16th, 2020. Representative Becker Finn moves that when the House adjourns today, that it would adjourn until 10 a.m. Saturday, May 16th, 2020. All those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The time for reconvening has been set.
Messages from the Senate. A message from the Senate, Madam Speaker. I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following Senate file herewith transmitted. Senate file number 512. The message is signed Cal R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. First reading of Senate files. First reading, Senate file number 512, an act relating to state government. Halverson moves that Senate file number 512 and House file number 356. Now on the general register, be referred to the chief clerk for comparison. Without objection, so ordered. Representative Becker Finn. I move the House now adjourn. Representative Becker Finn moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 10 a.m. Saturday, May 16, 2020.